What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 95 of <coughs> Press Any Key. Is it 95 or 96? It's 95. Okay, you checked. I'm 100% sure it's 95. what episode is it? We're at 95, baby. Five away. All right, all right. Cool. All right. So you can check us out on uh, social media, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at PressAnyKey.tv. You can also find this, probably already listening to it, on any <laughs> podcast app. Um all the big ones. None of that weird shit, though, that they put out, like uh, like Cozy.TV or some shit like that. <laughs> We're <laughs> and, uh, on Stitcher Premium. I am your host. Uh, Pat Knapp with me, as always, my co-host, Nick McFly. Everybody give it up for him. Woo! Yeah, that was weird not having that. Um, And uh, Mike, who um, he lost a leg to he's... diabetes, and so now he's <laughs> wheelchair down it. at home. <laughs> it, it. It. it would be great if I... if. In the playback of this, it cuts to him just pulling up a stone. In my mind, like, in yeah. my mind, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then uh, with us this week, everybody, give it up for my fiance Liz. Everybody, woo, she's here. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you, your voice cracked and didn't go off the octave. <laughs> <laughs> woo, <laughs> woo. Who needs her? <laughs> you guys, my voice is fucked this week. I can't wait for you to have all these auditions this next week. Hence why yesterday I was like. Hey, I don't think I'm going to go out because my voice is fucked and I need it for auditions this week. And like, I was like, I still got to get through a two hour podcast tomorrow. And oh, it's yeah. like, it's not like damage. It's like just the weather. Like, I just feel like my throat is constantly coated in phlegm for the past three weeks and it sucks. Coated in phlegm, the Pat Naparano story. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> so Mike, how's, uh, oh, how's, uh, how's wheelchair life? It's uh, it's more limiting than I thought, but <laughs> I'm getting a really, really good arm and back workout. Are you getting good seats at concerts, though? Because that's yeah. really what it matters. Yeah, I mean, Liz should be. Liz and I can get great seats now. It's true. Did, did we tell you about this? Yeah, I know. I've you know seen, about I this? Yeah, what yeah. I, Mike, what I want to know is what kind of discounts are you getting at Chipotle and other fast food restaurants? Yeah. Nothing from Chipotle. Really? really? They don't respect the troops. <laughs> they don't respect the troops. <laughs> Well, they respect the troops that were, you know, veteran you know, now. Yeah, that are veterans. <laughs> oh yeah, diabetes. <laughs> they don't respect There's somebody only two who ways in my, in my head, head. They don't Mike respect in a wheelchair. Who, in my brain, Mike in a wheelchair with one leg is wearing like a green camo yeah, jacket yeah, and has a buzzed too. haircut. Yeah, yeah, no, I see it's it. It's an American flag. And he's always yeah. jaded. When yeah. I gave up for this country, you know, yeah. it's always like that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, okay, something unrelated. Uh, DC news, Nick, your favorite. Oh boy! I well, know. actually, it is. It's this, kind of exciting is, for you. I, I, the way I put it was the this news was Christmas come early. Yeah, right. It really was. I mean, it isn't and isn't because there have been some things that, have, that James Gunn himself has commented All right, on. Let's go through those. So it's called setting it up. All right, let's set it it's up. About telling a story. All right, Pat, okay? let's set it up. So December seventh at four seventeen p.m. This all is right? great setup. Boris Kit. Fucking dropped a bomb. Boris Johnson. On uh, The Hollywood Reporter. Apparently, Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman 3 is not moving forward as DC movies hits a turning point. So what exactly is this turning point? Well, it's what uh, it's what a lot of people out there, Nick, was hoping for. Um, that they would um, just start fresh. That Start from scratch. But that isn't what they're doing. It sounds like that's what they're doing. And not not since. All right, all right. Okay. I'll, so anyway, here's some of the things, some of the big, ahead the, of the big ticket items that basically came out of this. Number one, and in chronological order, number one, um, we got word that uh, Patty Jenkins had submitted the script for Wonder Woman three. She had gotten notes, and they sent it back, and they said this doesn't fit with our vision. So uh, supposedly that was it. Like they just weren't going to work together. Uh, later on, we find out that uh, Petty Jenkins, I mean, Patty Jenkins, sorry, uh, Patty Jenkins. No, because what she did was pretty fucking petty. Um, well, this is all, you know. Like, this is not hearsay. This was confirmed. This, it's, I mean, the fact that she said she walked away, we don't know what the attitude behind Patty Jenkins walked away. She sent an away. email with a link to James Gunn, Peter Safran, and two other executives at Warner Brothers 
with the definition of what a character arc is after they gave her notes about her this script. This part is news to me. Yeah, that exactly. Is news to me too. All right, yeah, all right. That so, is, all right. Petty is appropriate. Yeah, so it's Petty pretty. And like, here's the thing: is that like they were they, apparently they were willing to have her be the director. They said, just they, rework it. The official timeline of this is before they took over she submitted the script to the people that were overseeing DC films, you know, in the transitional period, they gave her notes and a lot of the notes were the same as were the same notes they gave her on wonder woman, 1984, that there were story problems. So she didn't change it. And she submitted it to James Gunn and Peter Safran. And what do you think they did? It's like when, when your one parent says no, then you go to your other parent. Exactly. And they still and, say no. And they still say no. <laughs> he said no. And but what he said to her was, here are the things I would change to make this better. I want you to rewrite it and still direct it. And apparently she wrote some big long winded email and then sent a fucking link to the Wikipedia page of what a character arc is and basically saying, like, you should learn how to write. When like when I'm pretty he, sure James Gunn has the like, most successful yeah. DC movie, a DC TV show. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so that's the thing. And then this news comes out. And then another thing comes out that apparently the reason the Rogue One, the Rogue Squadron script, I mean, the Rogue Squadron movie was pulled was because all the scripts he submitted sucked. Like it was an absolute Let's keep mess. a DC for right now. But that's but that's kind of my point. Is that more like, of a, it's a more it's, of an endemic? It's Patty yeah. Jenkins this is more of a Patty problem. Jenkins issue than it is a, a DC wiping the slate sure. clean. So it's like I said, not like the because Gal Gadot. I think she knew about this before it got announced <laughs> because she put out that really cryptic tweet like, "Oh, I, I would I would love to play Wonder Woman for it. Doesn't matter who's behind the camera. I don't think she really said that. And she was like, I'd like to, she was like, I'd like to nominate she, my reformed yeah, Orthodox yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. She, <laughs> Bill Clinton. She she put it out there basically saying without you know naming names like it doesn't matter like i'm in like i am in like this is everybody gets their shot this is mine thanks um and james gunn is saying uh, said that he still wants to work with her he yeah. still wants to use her she's one of the good pieces he would like to keep the other thing don't is, get me wrong there's a lot of good pieces to dc it's just that they over it's it's like you know having a really nice finished bathroom in a house where the whole foundation is has been eaten by termites and you're like just keep going because this bathroom is fucking beautiful (laughs) tear the whole fucking house down and save pieces of the bathroom um well that's the other thing is the other reason why is that he has peacemaker season two in the works and he had had his own suicide squad hit like the the, which both comfortably live in that world he doesn't want to get rid of that material anyway dude um so what just put it in a different alternate universe. The other thing that we heard was that um, I'm going to go ahead and refer to my friends in the nerdy basement for this. Uh, first of all, a sequel to Zack Snyder's Justice League was in early development prior to the formation of DC Studios. The sequel is no longer happening. It would have featured Snyder's original Justice Team. Whatever. Justice Team. It's whatever. Uh, Wonder Woman 3. We already talked about that. Uh, Man of Steel 2. Man of Steel 2 was literally being written. They gave it to higher ups. They were like, ah, this needs another draft. It went back, and now it's just fr- dead on, like dead in the water. But um, since this has come out, two things have happened. Number one, James Gunn has said on Twitter that Superman is his highest priority. That, that doesn't mean anything, that though. He, right, but hold on. I didn't finish yet. This guy called Den of the Nerds, he's a YouTuber, he started tweeting that he, he's hearing from people, and this is somebody with an audience, that he's hearing that James Gunn didn't, doesn't like Henry Cavill as a person or an actor and all what? this stuff. So somebody tweeted James Gunn and said, hey, James, do you care to debunk this? And he actually fucking tweeted and said, sure, false. Like, okay. he likes Henry. So that's another, so Superman's his highest priority, and he likes the same actor everybody else likes. Still can, yeah, that doesn't mean you can't start from scratch. I'm not saying that doesn't mean you can't start from scratch, but what I'm saying is that he's willing, uh, he's still willing to give things a look. One of the stranger ones that came, I mean, the other thing is that he also filmed a cameo for, um, for the Flash yeah, movie, Flash. and they're, they're, they're wondering if they should keep him in or not, but the whole point of that movie is to wipe the slate clean, so it really doesn't matter if you have him in or not. Like they're using this next Flash movie as a jumping off point because as a Flash point, uh, yes, because Andy Muschietti, uh, the director of It One and Two and The Flash, 
has expressed interest in directing a Superman movie and writing one, and they like him. They like his work. So once again, this this is like another one of those, you know, let's tie all these loose ends together and see if they stick. But, I mean, this is better than, like, this shit, which is, like, totally not real. Jason Momoa's days of Aquaman are numbered as studio aims to have him lead a Lobo solo film. Lobo solo. <laughs> uh, that, potential definitely a job in the hut. Potential final Lobo appearance solo. as the yeah. king of Atlantis. Eat now, to, to Lobo solo. this was... This was the first one. That was, what's that one we had in college? Was like, Let's uh, not. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, maybe don't go there. So, is, that, um, did this, is this going to happen? Because everything... Well, this is a debunked one. This is a debunked yeah. one. This was the first one that was debunked. Because Aquaman, I wish we had a sound effect for like debunked. Aquaman oh. is the only one of these movies that made over a billion Liz. dollars. Do it, Bruh. <laughs> Aquaman <laughs> is the only one of these movies that made over a billion dollars. Okay. So clearly people like it. Here's the thing. Why? Like, why? Why? And the other thing is that like I don't think you can get a... I think the, the way I they think took Momoa, Aquaman is the way to go. Jason like, Momoa is yeah. is a like the way they they approach the character and him as as an actor he fits the role perfectly. Yes, yeah. Still would rather start from scratch. Nah, let's just start over. Nah, I want to keep him too. Get rid of get rid of Amber Heard. Oh, well, here you go. It's funny that you bring up the Rock, Mike, because a sequel <laughs> to Black Adam is now unlikely due to the due to the poor box office performance. <laughs> However, that being said. This is the first movie I've ever seen in my life that a actor and executive producer got on Twitter to quote clarify, you know, the stance or whatever. The Rock, the Rock tweeted out, "This is not going to lose money. It's actually going to make upwards of about seventy-two million dollars when it's all said and done. Like we've paid back our finance. Like they paid back. But I mean, a, like that's how much the Rock and his team are going to keep is seventy million dollars between them and like the ten people that my, like my hire question all these is, people. So I'm I'm not really good with with like box office numbers. They none of them really mean anything to me. They're just so big. Uh huh. But. To me, it seems like they like they, they put a lot of money in this being like huge smash hit, where the opening weekend seemed like it did good, and then everybody immediately stopped caring about it and stopped That's talking about it. Black Panther came out, <laughs> so Marvel like stomped on Black Adam. Yeah, yeah. You know, it had, curb stomped. It had on. three weeks to make money, and then as soon as Black Panther came, and then Thanksgiving came, right. it was over. So, but to the me, thing, it's, but the thing is, is that it's it's not it's not like obviously it's you want to know how much money it made overall, but it's how much did they profit? How much is the rock and his like team of like 10 or 12 people? So that they'll do it on? again. Exactly. Well, so they made $75 million, which is not the same as like one, like as Disney's about to make with that, like Disney's a whole ass studio with like, you know what I mean? Like the rock approached this from his team with like to do a partnership with Warner Brothers, you yeah. know what I mean? This isn't like Warner Brothers is like going out on it. Like it, they're still vested. They want it to do well, right? But it's not like they're losing money on this. And plus, they have all the ancillary revenue, all the merchandising. They still own the IP, so like that's forever valuable. My point is, is that but it's, this it's was so not, crazy to me. That, this did like, not make them mega rich like it could, thought it was exactly. Going to. And in a day where where so many studios say it's like if it didn't make seventeen billion dollars, yeah. it's not worth a while for us to do a sequel. Right. Like look at Netflix, how many one or two season series they have that they axed because it's like it didn't make crazy numbers. Yeah. Well, the rock, the rock is like um, his whole thing is like. Uh, I don't know why I wanted this movie to fail so bad. His like, whole thing is like, we're building our franchise slowly. It's like, yeah, but like, bro, don't act you like you making only $70 million in profit is good. You're supposed to be the king of this shit, I thought. You know what I mean? And also, it's like, how can you build your brand slowly when it's you're literally tied at the hip to fucking everything else yeah, dc exactly. you can't say yeah. we're doing it slowly their whole their whole uh like model was like rush it out as quick as we can yeah, so right they took 15 years for them to put this movie together all for it to shit when it got out <laughs> and then just put her out into nothing and now they're not going on with it at all like that is 100 percent. so here is another thing that we re that we love to see and was that is, debunked or not? That was what about the them not uh, doing the a second part? Oh no, they're definitely not doing a sequel. Okay, they're cool. out. There's no fucking way. But the Rock can. seems to the Rock. The got, Rock will have his way. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. There, Nick. You got to remember, there is there is an amount of time where depending on how much day, like if you have he's, he's got to play. If you got a smash hit on your hands, you can have a sequel out in two years. If you got this on your hands, you got to build up the. You got to. 
You got to let the fucking Twitter people be in like, you know, Black Adam really wasn't all that bad in retrospect. That yeah. shit needs to grow first. And he's got to plant the seed oh, yeah. right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Give, it, give it three years and then come back yeah. as a slight little cool thing. Uh, and the other thing is that Henry Cavill, although he didn't def- definitely leave The Witcher to be in the rock version of Superman or whatever, right? Um, he didn't sign a contract, so they don't know if, like, he doesn't know if he's employed and he left The Witcher. But he's also up for the next James Bond, so... Him and Aaron Taylor Johnson. Interesting. Ooh. I don't want to get sidetracked, but that's interesting. You should do an episode on that. Who should be, be the next down. James Bond and who was the best James Bond. Uh, anyway, here's the only thing that is 100% confirmed that we know without a doubt. Peter Safford and James Gunn were, were in, like, this isn't exactly spelled out, but it has to be. They have no. You just, invo- you just they, said this is the only thing we know no, no, for no, sure. No, what? Yeah, what took place, but not exactly how it took place. But I imagine this was the Zazlab. room where it happened. Saslav says, <laughs> "Do not fuck with this because this actually works." Uh, they have no involvement with the next Batman project. That's all Matt Reeves and his team. They're staying out of it. So my question would be: Does that mean it's like, hey, listen, Matt Reeves, we're not going to fuck with what you got, but we want to potentially fold it into our greater plans um or is it always just going to be isolated we well, got to remember because joker also just announced that it's filming joker. this week yeah joker also announced that it's filming this week and um one of the things that you got to remember is that it's also quote an elseworld story so dude, i do not think that they're the joker dude, can stand alone i don't i don't think i don't care if it gets rolled in but i you know it's like we have a young batman this would be a, like a really cool jumping off point for the broader DC I universe. I don't think I don't think they should do that though. I really yeah, don't. I mean they already they already fucked everything up with Justice League. Um, <laughs> like, but just, Mike, Mike, like, keep that's them what I'm saying. Real strong also, start separate. from just so scratch. you guys know, there was a Crisis on Infinite Earths movie planned for after the Flash. That's what they were building up to. And all three Batman were supposed to appear in that. Oh, didn't you say there was Moving also forward, there was a Batman Beyond movie that was coming out that Michael Keaton was gonna play that Batman, been cool. and they were gonna you know do a young Terry McGinnis and yeah. everything. We talked um, we talked about this earlier uh, in the Michelle week. Michelle Pfeiffer was gonna be in it too. That, That's so the one Mike, that I'm upset that got canceled. See, Mike, this is the, let me know if this if you agree with this. Pat and I were talking about it, and to me, it's like as cool as that would have been to see. I would love to see that movie. It also, would have been in the hands of Tim Burton again. I'm glad that they made the decision rather than being like, how cool would that be? And just saying it doesn't fit into the larger scale of what we're doing. Let's just not. Now, if they think, built up I to think, that story point, like it made sense, like Spider-Man right. No Way Home or something like that. And like you have. a. But the other thing is like Crisis on Infinite Earth. Infinite Earths is a huge multiversal DC event that I don't think you should do just after flashpoint because that was oh the you plan. mean like you probably Wait, shouldn't nick. nick the post credit scene for flashpoint was the crisis movie this shit was supposed yeah. to come in like two or they three li- years. that's that's i mean like getting back to what we were saying how dc's whole model up to this point was just like just do the biggest things possible <laughs> as quickly as possible yeah rather than earning them mike what were you gonna say are you saying the crisis movie that you want to happen or the Batman Beyond? The, one? the solo Batman Beyond with Keaton at the. Yeah, I with, mean, as like, yeah, as much as I would love I'd take to the actually crisis see movie it, too. I take it all. Yeah, I would. I'm fine if that. I can't if wait, wait for them to let the man talk. Right? In three years. I can't wait for that. I can't see his face. So yeah, yeah. I can't wait for him to unearth the uh, for them to unearth the Batgirl movie too. Yeah, right. Here oh, it that's is. Not happening. Slobs. That yeah, they can't do that, right? Otherwise, well, they can't make pay. money off of it. That's what oh, it's okay. defined as. So they could just put it on YouTube if they wanted to. But even then, they have to turn off all the ad revenue. So they're not. <laughs> um, could they sell merch, like release it, and then release merch around it? They can't make any money based off of that IP or the film itself. Uh, not the back IP? Girl, not Batgirl and Set, but remember, but that when, they make a, when they make a new iteration of a character, they copyright that version, so they can't make any... Ver- like that. All that shit was in place for merch and everything. Yeah, I, I hope that gets leaked eventually. Yeah, I hope, I, just, I hope so. Because apparently Brendan Fraser was good in it. And he's really good in The Whale, put in a call I was going to say, are we going to see The Whale? So, yeah, I'll probably like watch to. the whale. I, I heard it's really him. fucking sad. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, everything seems to be in order at Warner Brothers. Everything's up in the air. Nobody knows what's going on or how it's going to happen. But to me, this is like it used to be just like 
chaos and now it's organized chaos yeah which well, is a hell got, of a lot better than when, what, you, when you clean somewhere that's been dirty for a while it's got to get messier before exactly it gets cleaner, so. i just reorganized my bathroom this weekend and i took all the shit off the shelf over the toilet and it was just like all over the floor and i was yeah. like this is a mess but it's gonna be a hell of a lot better Nick, tomorrow. you're supposed to shit in the toilet not on the shelf above the toilet <laughs> mike that's a that's an upper double mike, decker where were you yesterday <laughs> That's a double upper decker. <laughs> Damn, you up there. <laughs> <laughs> Who took a shit on the shelf, Nick? <laughs> Don't even get me started, answer. man. All right. There's um, just makeup products everywhere, all over the bathroom. And I'm like, you get a whole shelf. Just please, just keep it in that one shelf. I don't even, get a, shit shelf. On I don't my even shelf. get a shelf. Yeah, I don't get a. I shelf. get it. I got a little cubby, and then there's nothing. a whole shelf. I'm and like, put all I your get, beauty products. I get there. remnants of all that shit all over my stuff, and then they're like, "Oh, can you can you put the seat down when you leave? <laughs> That'd be nice, you know." Liz, do you have something to say about this? Um, I do my makeup downstairs now. I did it upstairs Worst in shit. the bathroom while I was liar. recovering from foot surgery, where my toe was broken and reset. Um, See, Mike's the master of his own domain. You know me. Also, I don't say anything about the seat, but maybe flushing. <laughs> oh, right, let's, him. let's if move it's on. Yellow, to... leave it mellow. If it's brown, flush it <laughs> yeah, down. Pat's environmentally He's conscious. He's not following here. his own rule. Oh, Pat's got like a it's depression like a era mindset. Dollar, right? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta save that ten cent flush. It's true. <laughs> What's that saying? Uh, the, the worst thing to waste is a is a. Is a toilet full an imagination. Of water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, a toilet full of piss. Speaking of toilets full of piss, Game Awards <laughs> happened the other night. Oh, boy. <laughs> and um, so we watched them. And I actually I usually don't like watching these types of things, but I enjoyed hanging out and watching it. Yeah, it's fun to do. You know, you set up a watch together on Discord, and you, uh, you just watch other people win shit that really doesn't matter in the long run because we'll all be dead. Anyway, um, so God of War... Obviously, was nominated for ten categories. How many did they win? It Pat? won six categories out of ten. Really? I, I thought it was more. Um, I mean, I'm not. I don't want to. No, no, no. Get into the nitty gritty so, here. What surprised you guys the most? Like, what? What was award? That they didn't win Game of the Year. That shocked me as well. Because listen, I here, here so too. here's my rationale. I, I mean, I have I checked. I actually have 182 hours in Elden Ring, not 175. Sorry. I wanted to clarify that just for oh, the record. Yeah. People were really angry. About <laughs> I know. That. I, I, was. I was mad. See? How many hours in Elden Ring? 182. Oh, uh, uh, God, God of War. 71, I think. Okay. But it's a shorter game. Yeah. Um, My thing, the reason why I picked God of War for Game of the Year was because in some places it felt like I was playing Elden Ring in God of War because the combat system is that well thought out and like the enemies you fight are that much stronger than you that you really do have to, you know, really dial in and pay attention to what you're doing. Kind of like what you're kind of like Elden Ring. Um, but truthfully for me, it was the story. Cause I was like, this delivers a story that is not only emotionally satisfying, but it's also thrilling from start to finish and is presented in a cinematic tone that a lot of video games really don't get that treatment. And that's why a lot of them fall flat. I feel like, um, but alas, no, uh, I think, uh, but I, I mean, it, it makes Elden sense Ring. that Elden Ring won that one just because it's doing something totally unique in the industry. Whereas a, as great as God of War might be, it's doing something that's been done before. It, it's a it's sequel. just doing it at, yeah. a, at a really high caliber, yeah. but um, Elden Ring is, a, you know, it's just its own thing. I feel like Maybe. Elden Ring's true evolution, though, comes in the open world, wouldn't you say, Mike? Because it really is just Dark Souls with a jump button at a certain point. Well, that's what I was going to say, and I was actually wondering, if you think that God of War came out earlier in the year, do you think it would have been, like, say it came out in June, do you think it would have been much more of a contender? Even I mean, it already was, but do you think it would have no, been a lot, lot closer? No, dude, because it was obvious from when it came out, you know what I mean? Like, you can already kind of tell what the discourse is going to be around video games when they come out now, like, especially big ones, like... Like Choo Choo Charles. Like, <laughs> dude, talk about people missing the point of that game. That game got chewed up by IGN. It's like, it's a meme game. It got like, choo-chewed up. Yeah, it got choo-chewed up. Choo-chewed. Um, but I got, I mean, I guess for Elden Ring with it is the entire, it's it's 
like Nick said, it's kind of like a new thing, and I totally understand it shouldn't have won or didn't win for best narrative because it's the whole world is meant to be ambiguous and it's meant to draw like conclusions and kind of figure it out on your own and things to be mysterious. Because like yeah. um, he was talking about like how he was writing the narrative of it. He used to love to read, I think it was like English books. Um, and he had such a language barrier growing up because he's uh-huh. obviously Japanese that he had to fill in a lot of the actual rest of the story and the like plot for himself. So yeah. he wanted that type of ambiguity it's like, to it come. Almost like one of those um, like choose your own adventure books where you just like jump around. Bum, not not bum, even not even essentially <laughs> that, but like where you just have to be like, I'm not giving you everything on a plate. Right. Like yeah. it can be this, it can be that, and like there's this like you know little detail here that would allude to that, but. Yeah, but so I like it from that. <laughs> ultimately, element. you still gotta lead, read pages of lore to get the story in that game. Versus, yeah, it being a cinematic experience, yeah. which which God I think is kind of cool, is. where it's like everybody has their own experience with the game. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Splatoon three best multiplayer. <laughs> that but I Mike, was Mike, shocked. Mike called it. I could not <laughs> believe that. I also love that Nick was like, "Yeah, you're a big Splatoon guy. Right? I've never played a single the next hour." Day, of the only the only thing is, is because you're the only person on the show who's ever mentioned it before. The, so the I was like, "Oh yeah, day, Mike likes Splatoon." Doctor Disrespect posts the cover of um, Splatoon three on Twitter and goes, "This game beat COD for best multiplayer." <laughs> Playing this today, like so now he's streaming Switch games on his on yeah. his stream because it won, and he's also he shits on COD this year. A lot. He does not like God this year. Um, best strategy game was Mario Rabbids. Truthfully, I have to believe that's because I did not. I don't think I've seen footage for literally any other game on this list. Yeah. It was do the Dune Spice Wars <clears throat> game, which uh, a woman who directed that, me in a musical flow. once plays a character. In oh that yeah, game. yeah. Huh. Dreams do come true. Total Warhammer, Crazy. Warhammer three, Two Point Campus, and Victory three. Uh, then best family was Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Best family, Kirby. Uh, Lego Star Wars, Mario Rabbids, Nintendo Switch Sports. I guess there's another one of those. I didn't even know that came out. And then Splatoon 3. Um, Kirby in the Forgotten Land. I guess I'll play it. <laughs> well, I, we have, we it. have it. Yeah. yeah. Best fighting was Multiverses, which once again, I don't know. Any, I, I don't know any other game on here besides for Saifu. So. And then here's the um, the ones with the... Best role playing, Elden Ring, of course. It's an ama- it's it's the best RPG that came out all year. Best action adventure, God of War. It's the best action yep. av- best action adventure game that came out all year. Yep. Your uh your flashlight's on. Oh. No, best I mean, action I meant to do that. Bayonetta three. Best VR Moss Book Two. I don't know what that is. <laughs> best mobile is Marvel Snap. Don't know what that is. I think it's some sort of I'm card getting game. A lot of ads for Marvel Snap. They I still it. don't know what it is. Um, either way. Let's get to this one. Best performance with Christopher Judge. Best speech. Best speech. Best, he gave Longest out speech. My man gave out eight stream decks during that speech. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentionally. Yeah. And it was so funny because he burned so much time that they were rushing through stuff yeah. to catch up at the end. Like I was like, damn, yo, get good, good. He should, because like um everybody's got stressful jobs and everything. Everybody, it takes mountains to get a game like God of War, but like, he's the face of the experience. That's a face. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. It's a face. The Battlestar Galactica He put a lot of money into that face. (laughs) You think so? I think that's, he's very plastic surgeryed up. Yeah? Look at him 20 years ago. Yeah, are you kidding? His face is entirely sculpted. Yeah, I mean, he had a very strong about, jaw to begin with, but see. holy shit, is his face made out of plastic these days? Yeah, wait, can can you can you do like a if you can um, find it like side a by side? I'm looking. Yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, pull him up over here. I um, what's it called? I know he had surgery. Uh, he had surgery. They had to, they had to wait for him because he had to have. Double hip replacement and his knees replaced. I mean, just look at look at the, look at his jaw. Just, yeah, it's look at the whole second row, second in from the right. This one? No, that's to the left. Second in on the right. This no, one. Keep one more over. Yeah, there you go, my guy. That's what he originally looked like. <laughs> uh huh. No. Now look at him on the farthest one on the left on that row. <laughs> I I don't know. It looks like maybe he just got some cheek filler. He's definitely had a lot of work done. Yeah. His uh, jaw is out to look at that. 
Uh, his jaw is out to here. Maybe, like, maybe he just had his wisdom teeth pulled or something. Yeah, every day he gets his <laughs> wisdom um, teeth pulled out. Whatever, he had the Zac Efron thing. Where yeah, exactly. Your jaw all janked up. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't take away from what an amazing performance he put Yeah, in. it really he's was. A great, he's a great actor. Yeah, he is a great actor. And honestly, um, some of the scenes at the end of that game got me all fucked up. And uh, that only, I, I feel like, don't, like, there's, there's a... No, there's a cinematography and the music swelling, but if you don't have a good performance in front of you to sell it to you, then you lose yeah. it all. So, you know, good on him. I, I can't believe he was up against um, Al Pacino. <laughs> yeah, um, I can't read the the the, the cards here. Uh, I've never video played, played a cool. video game, but I like watching my grandchildren play a video <laughs> game. What's what's the song? <laughs> Uh, Goodwill Hunting? No, no, what's the song he does from the ad? Oh, uh, everybody oh, get a taste of my Dunkachino. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so there is one thing I do want to talk about that I think nobody... I haven't seen a lot of conversation about. The Bill um, Clinton kid? I haven't played... <laughs> we'll get to him. You saved the best for last night. Oh, yeah. I haven't played... Uh, Plague Tale Requiem. Yeah, I played like the first three minutes of it. The problem is it syncs all the RGBs in my case. So while I'm playing, lights will be flashing. And every I got to figure out how to disable that. So what I'm doing in the game isn't corresponding with the... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I have been playing Horizon Forbidden West, though. And although it is a good game, uh, th uh this was absolutely a filler game. I think. Yeah. And that it shows. And that's why I don't think anyone, why it won anything. Like, uh, it reminds me of a lot of the, um, uh, what's the free running game um, series? Assassin's, Creed. Assassin's Creed game. It's how, like, see, there's a it, lot of fillers in but there. It, but it, it, I, I meant literally, like, this was what do we put in the fifth spot for this category? Oh, I thought you that's meant, like, the I game. Meant. No, no, no. I'm skipping all the cutscenes, and I, I kind of know what's going on in the story. And like the whole world and lore is cool, but I just like the game. Like they they made fighting the monsters with the bow and like the robotic T Rexes and everything. That's fun. So I'm just making my way through the map, just leveling my character up and fighting bigger and that bigger. Sounds monsters. like how Pat plays a video game. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Say nothing then, new there. And, yeah. But Did you, are you are you playing a Plague Tale? Well, I want to, but the the thing, but the thing is, is that I didn't. But like his computer is yelling at him all the I, time. I didn't like. It's the, too green. I didn't like the story in Horizon One, so I'm just skipping it in Horizon Two just to get to the shit that I like. Whereas Plague Tale, I will give it an honest go. You right. know what I mean? Like, Mike, I will, have you played Plague Tale yet? I haven't. It looks like it's on Game I Pass. Mean, I know it's on Game Pass. It looks like one of the games, and it's obviously, not, that I would probably play. But it also kind of reminds me of what was that um, Lord of the Rings game that was. Like very open world Assassin's Creedy. Oh, uh, Shadow of War. Yeah, it looks like a good mix of like Shadow of War, Dishonored, and it Assassin's is. Creed. Are you no, thinking? Of, I think no, you're thinking of a even. different game. Yeah, you're thinking of something. It's like else, Paper man. Mario. No, <laughs> no, you're you're thinking of Pentiment. That's a different game. Of a Plague Tale. Plague Tale is a 3D action adventure game. Like what God am I of thinking of? And yeah, you're thinking of Pentiment. Is that the one where it's like your the paper? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right, well, I thought, you, uh, I thought that's I'm, what you're talking I'm about. I'm correct, right? Nick's wrong. <laughs> yes, I'm wrong. Hold okay. on. Hold on. You are correct in the fact that you're talking about the right game. But, but, your, but your assessment is but wrong. But your assessment is absolutely couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, so you're saying this game is not like Paper This Mario. game is a sequel to, an, to, an, to a Plague Tale whatever the fuck, right? But they actually added a combat system in. But it's also shit where it's like you got to throw a torch and make a, a, a you know, and move the rats out of the way so you can walk by them. And, like, you know, you, you can't run up and stab this guy. You got to bonk him on the head or ring a bell or something and distract him and sneak by him. Like, yeah, it's that's really most creative. Of Dishonored's gameplay. Okay, yeah, like, but that is not Shadow of War or Assassin's Creed. <laughs> no, but as in, like, the, like, all the sneak and everything else with yes. that. Like, I'm looking at, like, those kind of things where oh. it's like you can optionally choose how to fight shit. Yeah. Every every encounter is like a puzzle, Nick. It's like you know what I mean. Like you, you get can, the little boy with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you throw him into the rats. <laughs> eat him. Feed You're him fine. So um, I think I haven't experienced Plague Tale. I can't tell why it was nominated yet. Um, but I can tell you that her Horizon Forbidden West 
absolutely was a place round out yes was a round out pick category which like you know it's nice to get recognized for your work but i mean at the same time it's just like this is they got a participation trophy this is everything that i wanted horizon one to be if they were going that way you know what i mean like that's the no they went their own style in open world and i was like here's the things i want you to fix if you're going to make that type of game and that type of style. And they fix that for the sequel. But now I'm playing the sequel and I'm like, okay, these things work better and I like it more. But now I'm wishing like, I wish you guys would have just did this differently. Like just stick with the shit that works. You know what I mean? Like it's that type of thing. Yeah. I'm like, like I'm not sitting there in bewilderment of how this game was developed. Like Callisto protocol. I'm actually well, I guess I enjoyed Callisto too. I don't know. I was abused by Callisto. I don't. Does it you love like, me? You like a little abuse? Yeah, yeah. Does it love me? Does it not? Like, I don't know what it wants. Anyway, let's uh, let's get to the last guy here. I'll pull up a video of him. Um, so, uh, Nick, you were about to log off of Discord. Dude, the timing was so perfect for this. We're watching the final speech for um, game of the game of the year award. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go to bed. And all of a sudden, from the shadows, a child appears. <laughs> and we both just go, what the fuck is about to happen? So, uh, Dark spirit has invaded. Mike, did you catch this? Have you seen this? I did. I, I had this on in the, like, because I had topped off because I was trying to finish some work. But I had Mike, my Mike tops himself off. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking jerking off before. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, I turned and I looked at the other screen. Oh um, so... I, I want you guys to realize before we play this clip, every article that Kotaku has posted about the Game Awards and what happened at night, that night, they have omitted this guy, and you can go check every one of their tweets. I am the first commenter underneath <laughs> saying, you forgot about our hero, and posting a picture of him, and I almost ratioed Kotaku on one of those. <laughs> Fuck yeah. This titles. Um, and we create the game so, that like, that's, a, that's a translator. And dude, this is also, let's talk about the fact that this is a major security failure. This man is in stabbing distance of Miyazaki Boy. right now. Yes. Uh, and like, um, thank you so much. Like, I think if, if God of War Ragnarok came out just a few months earlier, it would have a bigger up. chance. Didn't we just say that? Nick, didn't you just say yeah. that too? Everybody and say that I think I want to nominate this award. To uh, my reformed Orthodox rabbi Bill Clinton. Thank you, everybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, think it's, I, think it, I think we're watching a streamer's clip. That's why. Okay, so that's no, that the, was, was that the broadcast. No, that I was not the broadcast. Was, oh, no. So this is so this is the this is the kid right here, right? Apparently, he's been on Infowars a bunch. Um, he's a no. He's like he's this a troll. Is, this is his thing. He's a troll. Uh, Jason Schreier. Um, Formerly of Kotaku, he's a he's a big uh, he's a big party ruiner in the games industry. Uh, they don't like him very much. He did interview this kid, and he did come out and say he's like, yeah, this kid isn't anti-Semitic. He's he's actually he's Jewish because he I, asked I him. Mean, a, he sounded like he has an is Israeli accent. Yeah, he too. asked him a question in Hebrew, and he almost absolutely understood what he was saying, and yeah. then tried to fake that he didn't know what he was saying. Yeah. <laughs> so. Like, I mean, it didn't seem like, like an like, anti-Semitic comment. Yeah. It just seemed like a, he just came he's up with fucking, something stupid yeah, he's, to say. He's a fourteen-year-old troll, and it was and but like if you go fact, back and look at the footage when they call the the names up, you yeah. can see him walking. You I'm see, like, you yeah. see their team he coming joins, from around the corner, and he comes down the center yeah, aisle. And he joins their on, and nobody says anything to yeah. him. And that's the thing is like, but he plays it smooth because he like starts patting people on the back and like yeah, like he was yeah. meant to be there. And, and he's hugging people. He's yeah. shaking their hands, and like that's the like that's. I think that's the best part of the troll is that like he's he sold it that well and it's like you're looking at these people on stage and you're like one of these things is not like the other you know what yeah. I mean? like and then I, well you can see him too and when he's in the background like looking to see if he's in on shot. the monitor yeah. 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 yeah yeah I love um but either way though I'm glad that it it was just a troll they was, didn't dude, they didn't so arrest funny. him they just pulled him off stage it was really funny um it didn't steal the moment either because the moment was already over yeah. Um, so it wasn't it actually like, heightened the moment yeah, for it me. Actually, yeah, it actually made it. I was like, wow, this, this whole two at a half hour event was worth it. Mm -hmm. Um, so all this goes on, they don't arrest him, everything. He's just a troll, all this shit. But like I said, massive security failure. Oh yeah. Like had, what if that was just some like deranged lunatic that got up there? 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that is not good. And the other thing is that like, uh, there was someone earlier who was like, oh, it's somebody's kid. It's this. It's like, no, 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 no. That this man, that somebody paid for him to get in there. Pay, like, you know what I mean? Somebody mm-hmm. paid his Alex for Jones this. got him a Tro- ticket. Yeah, exactly. To get this <laughs> troll to work. Like people are like, he's a son of a developer. He's this or he's that. He's like, no, this was, this was, I think. He, I'm glad, I'm glad that Bill Clinton is finally getting some recognition though. Yeah. He mentioned in, uh, somebody mentioned that this kid sent him dms after they played video games together and explained what his plan was to get up there on stage with miyazaki if he won game of the year and the guy who received that dm was like bullshit bro and then he actually said and what do i know i'm watching the game awards and there he is is. (laughs) so that only would have happened in like if uh if elden ring won like there he wasn't just gonna do it no matter what he was just like Elden Ring. I guess. I guess. I guess you he know. Gonna do it regardless. We'll never Come know. On, we'll never, we'll never know the timeline where God of War won and he stabbed Corey Barlog on stage. We'll <laughs> never see that timeline. You know. We're not, yeah. You know, oh we're, no. You know we're not living with that. So. Um, and then uh, Christopher Judge gives like an eight minute eulogy. <laughs> oh my God! A chance to speak at the microphone again. I guess somebody has to take it. So uh, somebody call Al Pacino. I will say this: I do like how Christopher Judge gave it up to Sonny, the the kid who played Atreus, because in one of the interviews that they did for Ragnarok, uh, Christopher Judge said that when they first did that, when they did the first game together, he's like, "I met Sonny, and is a couple years later, and now he's all grown up, and like he's I think he's like sixteen or seventeen now, and he was like, in as soon as they started doing their first scene together, the first thing he said was that Sonny now had like." the ability to read a scene and see it from a million different ways. And like, and he's like, Oh my God, this is a young man who's intelligent now and has thoughts and feelings about the world. And then he goes, as opposed to the kid I worked with last time that had a million distractions. <laughs> like, yeah. So, I mean, that must've been we rough. Gave him Adderall and now so, he's doing great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, I mean, they obviously have some sort of relationship because Sonny was in some movie with, um, uh, not, Nicole Kidman and somebody else. I forget who. Another big fucking actor. And Christopher Judge like said, oh, you think you big shit now? Like, you're working with bigger people than me. Like, they have a rapport. You know what I mean? And I think that comes through in the game, too. But also, there's something deeper there because he told him on stage, like, hey, remember the things I told you? You know, hire me because one day you'll be. And two, don't be a douchebag because, like, I'm sure he, I mean, there's, I don't think it's ever been said outright that he was a dick. But I mean, like, I don't think he was the easiest to work with. Who, the kid Star. or no. oh yeah yeah. So wait, and, so all I got out of that is our Lord and Savior Nikki Kids made God of War the game it is today. Didn't you say Nicole Kidman acted with him? What? Yeah, Nicole Kidman. But that yeah, but that's the Liz, Liz just got sidetracked. <laughs> just, yeah, I did. her train I heard, of thought. I heard Nicole Kidman she was like, heartbreak feels yeah. good in a game like this. Hit that red button <laughs> under the one. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Hit that. <laughs> talking to your mic yeah, yeah there we go uh, <laughs> so, so yeah i made was... her mute herself all right so um so all right, so um it's been how many years pat yeah it's been how many years <laughs> Two, uh, 2001 week 2007? 2008 well when was the hulk 2008 they were both 2008 mm-hmm. oh wow all right so uh well, the hulk movie was also a universal picture so um, they wanted to ride off the coattails of the hype iron man was generating mm-hmm. so um all right 14 years 2000 2007 is when they formed okay 2008 they put out the first one so we're talking about the mcu everybody so today uh we've been talking about doing it for a long time but we wanted to wait until black panther was out we're gonna rank all th- 30 of the current MCU movies. We didn't do phase four. Bec- I mean, cause there's just no point. And like, not everybody watched all the TV shows. <laughs> if you could get through them. And, um, I think everybody here agrees that just off the bat, the TV shows in general, just please, please close that ad out. Well, please. don't, don't hold. I don't think I can. Oh no. It's just giving me. Yeah. So you got rather look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Liz, if you haven't over already, you can cut to the TV. Okay. I was um, <laughs> So, um, 
I guess we're Let's, going in alphabetical order. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so I guess we'll start with Ant Man and the Wasp. Well, actually, we probably could pull them out, right? All right, we, all right. I know how they go in order. So if you just right. want to start in order, all right. So we'll yeah, start with the first Iron Man. First I mean, Iron Man. I mean, come I'm on. not going to argue S tier. You, you can't. You can't. Nope. It is S tier. It is. Mm-hmm. All right. So what was Incredible Hulk? Um, Ooh, solid I, C. I would give it a solid C. I would just to give our that's the thing is we got to keep it in perspective to give ourselves room for the other movies. I would drop it down to D. Okay, what Agreed. about you, Burke? Liz? Yeah, bring it down. I haven't even seen this one, so I'm oh, okay with D it. it is. I don't think it's a bad movie, but I think like like not one of their best relative to all the other movies. It's got to be lower bottom yeah, of the barrel. The thing you got to remember is that these are still better than ninety percent right. of the shit. But that we're comes talking out, relative. So yeah, we're talking relative too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. So then Iron Man 2 is the second one. Where the fuck is the... Um, where is it? Did you say this is alphabetical? It is Iron alphabetical. Man. Oh, there it is right here. All right. Where do we want... Which one? Which one? I oh, would uh, put Mickey Iron Rourke. Man 2 I would put this as an A. Really? Really? All right. B. No. I really no, enjoyed this, is, this one. This is a uh, C This is a C. Yeah. I really enjoyed this. All right. Okay. C, fine. I but I, just C. for the record, I really enjoyed this one. Okay. I know I, most I, people don't like it, but... I think just When's coming off of saw Iron Man, coming it came off out. Of the first Iron Man in comparison is just so, so much less. I really liked Mickey Rourke's villain way better than Obadiah Stark. Stain? St- Stark. Yeah, Stain. <laughs> Obadiah Stain. <laughs> um, y- I think you need to rewatch this because I thought the same as you and then I rewatched when, it. When we were children. A couple of years ago and I was like, oh no. I thought the racetrack scene was fucking awesome. Cool. You know Elon Musk is in that movie? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cool. Really? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, the real life Iron Man. <laughs> old Musky. Old Working Musky. All right. Um, what came after Iron Man? The first Thor. Um, Ooh. I would put that f- C or D. Yeah. What I guess that? probably C. I would. What say do you C. think, Burke? Yeah. So, um. God, C or D. I don't have a preference to be honest. I'd give it a B, but I, I think we got to compromise go and put it C. Yeah. I'd give it a B because think about Ragnarok. I mean, not Ragnarok. Uh, think about Dark World. Dark think World. about think about Love and Thunder. Yeah. Because those up, aren't actually. really Ds. Those are more like I just Cs. found like none of the characters endearing. Uh, like, obviously, you have Thor, but he doesn't really become endearing until uh, the Avengers movies. I felt none of the settings, none of the villains are interesting. In that, in that, like, I it's such a forgettable movie. When was the last time you saw it? When it came out. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we can, this is subject to change. We can move yeah, it yeah, around yeah. if okay, we need yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll get more on the board. All right. Um, next is the first Avenger. Captain first Amer- Avenger. Uh, a. I want to give that an give, A. I would give the first Avenger an A. Mm-hmm. Uh, where the fuck is it? Is there it? it is. Yeah. Solid A in my book. Great first outing. For Captain America, mm-hmm. excellent World War great II movie. Great characterization of all the characters. Yes, great. You nobody get I to f- know everybody right off the bat. Feel like nobody's left behind either. Mm-hmm. Like there's like every single plot line in that None movie of those they tie off. POWs were left behind. <laughs> great cliffhanger ending. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Then we have. Oh, then then um. Uh, I mean, come on. There's no. It's just top it, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Uh. What comes after that? Oh, Iron Man three. Um, okay. I feel like this. All, I also really enjoyed this one, and when a lot I like of people this one didn't too, like people it, people don't like it. Because, but I mean, it's like you get—it's such a great painting of Tony Stark. Yes, it's like—is it the man or the machine? Mm-hmm. Um, Mike, I how would do you give feel about it? Because I feel like you and I feel strongly about it. It's Mike, a character study. It's not mm-hmm. really an action movie. That's the perfect description of it, and I don't know where to put it because of that. I'd give it a B. Like, let's give. Let's put it. I'd in put B. it in B. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. What's after that? I think Thor: The Dark World is next. Yeah. What do we do with this? <laughs> yeah, just throw that at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> where is where the fuck is it? Are they all get they all move. Uh, uh right, right there, right there. Yeah, I would put yeah, I would I'd put, put it in D. D or E. E. No, yeah. it's relative. Uh, you guys, yeah, I get you guys are saying it's relative, but I also still think the two Thor movies are better than the Incredible Hulk movie. Like, then throw the Incredible Hulk down to E. Uh, okay, I guess yeah, that works yeah. too. Um, I was about to say, are they on the same level? Actually, yeah, whatever. All right. 
Um, next is Winter Soldier, and we know where that's S-tier. going. S tier, S tier, still S-tier. the best Marvel movie ever. I don't care who says otherwise. Go fuck yourself. That's um, the one that sticks out so vividly to me, yeah. just like constantly because, all like, the time. When it was I think like about it. how relative, like Snowden, that shit had just happened, and then this yeah. movie comes out, and it's all about security and information and shit. I would even say reorder them in the S tier, so that's first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so then, um, then it's Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I would say A or B. Yeah, really I strong. Like I'd give one. it an A. I'd give it an in, A. I'd put it in a B. Who right. the fuck is there? Defend it is. yourself. I, yeah, defend I, your I just, position. Like, these movies to me were fun. I just didn't care too much about them, to be honest. And I know it's probably I, a hot. So take. I would disagree. It's like it was the like really revived Marvel. Not that it needed reviving, but it was like in a moment where Marvel could have been just like slumping, where Phase Four is now. That could have happened a lot sooner had the Guardians not shown up on the scene. So I really think that they like injected new life. Twenty fourteen, I feel like was where like it had like so, like Avengers happen, and then twenty thirteen was kind of like a eh year because it was Thor and Iron Man mm-hmm. three, and then twenty fourteen was Winter Soldier, Guardians straight into Avengers two and Ant Man right into Civil War. Yeah. Like it was hit upon hit. I would give this one an A though. I my, I, I think. You know, Mike, you if can, you don't feel super strong, I would say it deserves A. Put it up in A. Okay. All right. Um, the next is Age of Ultron. <laughs> um, C. I, I'm okay with B. I think B or C is fair. I don't um, know. This was actually like one of my first intros into Marvel movies. Yeah? This is like, I think this is like, what a place the to first, start. This is the first one I think I saw in theaters um, besides like Andrew Garfield's Spider Man, uh, but that doesn't really count. I'd say B, just because of like my nostalgia. Uh, honestly, I think it it deserves to be on the same level as what is it, Iron Man two or three that we have there. Three, yeah, three? I yeah, think I'd say that's that. Fair. Yeah, yeah, I'd say they're on the same level as quality. And the other thing is that I feel like Avengers two at the time, like a lot of people look back on it and they go, "Oh, it wasn't that bad." And remember what I said at the time because we saw this together. I said I was like, "Well, I went and saw it with, you know who first. And then I saw it with you guys a couple of days later. And before we saw the movie, you asked me what I thought of it. And I said, I think a lot of people are hating on it because half the magic is seeing the team together for the first time. And you just don't have that in this that, one. Right. And yeah. you need a nameless, faceless army for the Avengers to fight. Like, you can't just have one villain. Like, even in the fucking Thanos movies, they snuck a, a nameless, faceless army in there twice. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, like so I feel like in retrospect when you watch this and you and you come down from the hype of like oh Avengers 1 was amazing Avengers 2 is going to be great and you realize that like oh this is the norm now that they're all together there's some great character moments in this movie I'd have to rewatch there's that some, one like, I still I still think if it was up to me I'd put it in C tier but I'm okay putting I mean, it in B I mean even just the the two scenes where they're talking about like who made um who made Ultron or whatever mm-hmm. and the scene where Cap and Tony are going back and forth, and oh yeah, this really Cap's kicks like, off that that Cap's whole story like, line. And Tony's like, "And what happens if we lose?" And Cap's like, "We'll do that together too." And then that's paid off in Endgame when he's like, "You said we lose, and you weren't there." Like, so that sets up this oh, whole conflict right. and plot, plot line, like that people just gloss over yeah. because it wasn't, it didn't blow them away like the first one because did. they killed Ralph Boner. Yeah, they killed Ralph Boner. That's right. <laughs> um. Yeah. So um then it's the first Ant Man. I honestly I would I would give the I would give solid B. Like it's no worse or no greater than this. Oh wait, this is the wrong one. This one. No no I don't think it's any better or worse than a B. I think that's fine. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. Remember this these is are, a, this is the yeah. era where they were doing nothing but hit after hit, so a lot of these are gonna be high ranking. Right. <laughs> that's fair. Um so then after Ant-Man was Civil War. We're just going yep, straight Civil to the top. The top. We're just going right to the top. Because there's literally... That was the Can peak at one point, And yeah. it was fucking wild if you were there. Um, mm-hmm. What came after Civil War? Wait a minute. Did I Black fuck... Black Panther? Where, where you, does that come no, in? No, did I fuck up here? Did you forget? No, Doctor Strange comes after Civil War. I was going to say. 
when do when do we start getting spider-man back isn't that that's 2017 that's next year um when, is, when does black panther come in 2018 2018 yeah. so, so this Thor is dr Ragnarok. strange so listen i am of the the mindset that dr strange one is the exact same movie as iron man one but the sheen has worn off so I would give it an A. But I think a big part of uh, the the sheen of Iron Man is Robert Downey Jr.'s charm. And it's also Benedict the fresh Cumberbatch new take. Does not have the same charisma. Yes, I would say this is a B. You give it a B. What I would you? also give it a B. This they like with B. Yeah. Okay. Damn, I was really pulling for you. All right. I know. I walked out of that yeah. movie theater and just, I was like, everyone was like, that was so good, and I was like, it's Magic Iron Man. I was yeah. like, it's yeah. great. It's the same fucking well, that's, guy. That, like, that's it. That's why I'm like, it's okay. But yeah, well, that's, like, you didn't really that's do why, anything do you as notice good. That, that's why they always pit them together. Like yeah, why, yeah. Tony, why Tony and uh, uh, Steve Benedict are always together. Cumberbatch as, as an actor and and uh, the fuck is his name uh, in the movie? Um, uh, the, Stephen Strange. The actor and the character aren't as charming or interesting None of the other characters in the movie are, are as charming or interesting as the other characters surrounding Iron Man. It's just like it's the same thing, but like, but like a bootleg <laughs> Iron Man. Yeah, I think like with his, yeah, you, you want to get like the, back alley Iron Man? I got over yeah. here. <laughs> you you don't get like the dramatic irony that you get from Iron Man mm-hmm. from Doctor Strange to yeah. the level of like it's compelling enough. Yeah. Yes, that makes sense. All right, so 2017. What was the first 2017? One? Guardians of the Galaxy two. It was Guardians too. Um, I like this the same as the first one. Yeah, I like it more than the first one, but I, it obviously doesn't deserve to be S tier. Yeah, I mean, look at the company it keeps if it's in the S tier. Yeah, it doesn't. So, yeah. But I, I yeah. think yeah. I like two better uh, yeah. than one. Yeah, you can put it in front of it if we're doing. We're not, or we're not doing. The, like o- the only like reason that, I but. said that for for um, Winter Soldier, which is like it's so clearly it's so the best, clearly it the best needs one, to yeah. be the first one on this list. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Um, Homecoming. Set, that's right. That would, no, that's far from Homecoming. Is um, I'm stuck. Also, on. I will. I will list up. Pat, you were doing this from memory, okay. which is way more important. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd give this an A. It's like a I'd gr- give it a B. I think it's a really strong first outing, but oh, that's okay. Uh, what about you, Mike? I don't like remember. I'm not trying to be one of those weirdos on Twitter that's like, but they neutered Spider Man, but I feel like in this version of Spider Man they kinda took away everything that made him special. I, I agree with that, but I'm taking it more on like what our usual standard. Yeah. What what did they accomplish what they were trying to do? Yes. Yes. And was it fucking awesome to see Spider Man with, you know, like Tony Iron. Stark, yeah. you know, like I think they, they knocked it out of the park for what they were trying to do. May not have done the or- character origin yeah. justice, but I don't count that against it. Yeah, I count that against uh, the MCU as a whole, not the one movie. Yeah, we'll find uh, somewhere to hate. Mike A or B? B. All right, All right. B it is. Yeah. Liz, you have an Sorry. opinion on Spider Man? Uh, Homecoming. Not that one. No. Uh, Thor Ragnarok. A. Yeah. Ragnarok. Yeah, I'd give that. Yeah, that was a great movie. It was actually on TV this week. My mom let me know she watched it. <laughs> Um, then Black Panther then first Black one. Panther, yeah. You know, you make this way less impressive that I can remember these off the top of my head if yeah. you're reading them off the list. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll, I'll All let right. you know. Correct so, you. Truthfully, I'd yeah. put it up here. Yeah. Because The Lion King is one of my all-time favorite movies, and this is just The Lion King in superhero form. And I get so fucking emotional when he is in the afterlife or whatever and he's telling all the other kings you're all wrong like he's having his moment uh the first time i watched this i got bored really early on and stopped watching it and i watched it this week in preparation to watch wakanda forever you've never seen this before that i've never seen the whole thing i i think i stopped watching in the first 25 minutes the first time first go around and i really enjoyed it um, I still don't think it rises to S tier. I I give it an A. I don't. I don't. What about you, Burke? It, I you could argue for S tier. I would say it would one million percent comfortably be an A. Like Michael B. Jordan in this is insane. He's like fantastic. just his whole character and the story of where it's like they both want the same thing, but from like a good and bad perspective. He had shit. to max lift three hundred and fifty pounds to have that body. But he doesn't. He doesn't 
bring the movie to S tier just because he looked fucking no, incredible. No, I think S tier comes from the writing and the performances. And you want to talk about writing? Yeah. There's a what are those joke in this movie. Yeah, it was that 2016. In, yeah, and it was Marvel like memifying like immediately this movie ages poorly. I'm mean, wait, no. It wasn't 2016. It was 2018. She was 16. Why wouldn't she say a what are those joke? It it like it was so lame, dude. It was so lame. Well, I think yeah, like, but the characters one that are out lame, of touch. subjectively lame line line doesn't take away from the emotion that's given in this movie. Where where did you put Homecoming? Put that as a B. I put that as a B. Yeah. Yeah, I feel home like even in comparison, if you were to put this as an A, I would put Homecoming as a C. Like I would kick that down. Like if you're comparing it to like those kind of things, Nick. Because I feel oh, like dude, actually, was I, that's that's a fair point. Like uh, the one that really bothers me. I know they make make a bunch of jokes where Peter is like out of touch with like, oh, this is an old when he goes like that really old movie. It's like no kid would ever say that really old movie that really, you know, he'd be like, oh, do you ever see that old movie? And then, then the Jesus, older Tony, person how would old feel, is this guy? Yeah. I didn't carbon date him. Yeah. 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 That like those lines are corny. So that, I think that's fair. Um, I still don't back down from my stance that it's an A, but you know it depends. Mike, Liz? what do you, Mike? Um, what, how how which do you one are feel? We talking about Black right Panther. Now? Black Panther. Okay, back to like they say some like meme things, some like, corny ass shit. Well, you also have to think like they're literally in a bubble, like they're not. So they wouldn't have the what are those joke. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like they're, they're like a this year is not behind. a good they're argument. A year this it is, is not a good argument. Is. No, this is not. It is. You just don't like. This it. is very much like yeah, they're isolated. So then they definitely yeah. wouldn't say that. Okay, well. But it's like we're like Russia is like 30 years behind on pop culture shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, Thank you. Um, I, I don't have any other real strong ar- arguments rather than like I wasn't really on the edge of my seat the entire time. There was a lot of moments where I was like, oh, oh, sh-, where it, like if you're talking about um, Winter Soldier, the whole entire time my asshole was clenched. <laughs> Whereas Black Panther, there was moments mm. where it clenched. A lot of them, but not the whole it's, time. I feel like it's a different type of intensity, though. Where Winter Soldier, I feel like, is in your face all the time. We got to keep moving. We're never safe. Where Black Panther is really, like, the story of, like, a king and his people. And, like, what he goes through to establish himself and legitimize himself. It's, I feel like it's a different type of like intensity. Thor. Yeah, but Thor's more like <laughs> fish out of water. Yeah, than, yeah, like, no. yeah they, like, you know, they fucked up Thor. And they were like, this is how we should have done Thor. Yeah. Like, I, I, like no. I said, I, I'm not, it's I don't just wanna, Lion King. I don't want to argue this one to, to death. All right. I'm st- taking an A. I Mike. think you guys have won enough, so I'm taking an S on this one. What do you mean? We, we've we done this objectively. You got you got Spider-Man in B. You got Spider-Man Homecoming in B. Okay. All right. Well, I, then if we're going to do it that way, then I would say drop Black Panther to A and drop Spider-Man to C. And okay. then, we're all, then we'll be fair and square. All right. All right. Yes. Oh, that dude, was... fucking seeing that in the same tier as <laughs> Iron Man and Thor. Yeah, think about that, did you? Fuck. All right, put it back. Put it back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what came after this? You want me to? I thought, I thought, you I know no, no, no. I I know it. Um, it was Black Panther. Oh, then it was Infinity War. Yeah. Yep. Like, obviously, an S tier. <laughs> Um, yeah, those movies are so fucking good. Yeah. Um, there was something in fall 2018 too. I'm not thinking of. Yes, there was. Um, Ant Man two. Oh Nick no! Yes, it. this was this was July, I think. So Ant-Man this one I think is better than the first one. I agree. But I don't want to give it an A. That's fine. Yeah. 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 I I'm not a fan of those like, movies. To be I'm honest, I'm just I'm just I feel not like a, a lot of people like don't what? like it, and I don't understand why. I'm I'm of the mindset that I don't think a movie that with this type of tone can stand up to the right. ones that are in the. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're it's a lot dramatic. of that. Like you're not going for broke, so I'm not giving you everything. Then you know yeah. what I mean? Like oh, I'm here for a comedy and a good time and like you know lame jokes mm-hmm. and good action scenes. I got that, and that's what they're there for. You know? Yeah, I feel for these movies, they feel dated. They feel like they would have came out. 10 years earlier like if it came out like late the, you're talking about the style just of like comedy style the comedy the like type of that seems like more of a per, that's a, a perception thing rather than it doesn't speak to the quality of the movie it speaks to your perception of what the style the genre is yeah but yeah do you agree but that, I but think that, that, that b is fair I think I think it's all right. Yeah, I'm uh, again. I'm gonna be like I'm not a huge fan of them, so I'll leave them up to you guys who have more of like a oh, objective opinion. Okay. All right. So then, um, that was it for that year. 
pretty yes, sure. Yes, it was. So then 2019, uh, yeah, we started with this. So listen, I've recently rewatched this. I put it up here. Really? Yeah, because the first time I saw it, truthfully, I don't think I got it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I watched it on the plane, and um, I was able to, it was just me and the screen, so I was able to like really mm-hmm. process everything and like, this is well written, good character work. There's some lame I was, stuff. I thought for me, it I, it felt very surface level and just catering to, like, uh, oh, don't know. get me wrong. The marketing is very much like that, and I feel like surface. Do level, you think I would? I we were both kind yes, of like. I feel like surface level. It is like that, and there are those moments where it's like, why do you think they call it a cockpit or stuff like that? But even then, it's like, um, you like when when. Uh, when you watch the movie, you see every single moment, like every moment, someone's just doubting her for like one reason or another. And the reason they're doubting her is because either she doesn't have her memory or she doesn't know who she is or she's been missing for six years or she's this. You know what I mean? Like there's legitimate reasons, but I feel like the way that they frame the marketing mm-hmm. to sell it, you know what I mean? Upon rewatching this though, a lot of great moments, a lot of good action. Ben Mendelsohn and Sam Jackson are great in this the movie. The one thing I'll say yes. is just to yep. kind of like to say my point is I felt like a lot of the girl power stuff was just surface level and didn't actually deliver on yeah. the promise of it's like this is a girl power movie it just hey girls come and watch this movie because we said that it is and it didn't deliver on that. right I don't Do you think it actually does the girl I don't power think thing? it does the girl power thing I think it does but it makes a lot of jokes and references to right. it I think it that frames, are shallow I think the marketing frames it like that truthfully yeah. I think also a lot of the references that too but but when you watch the movie yeah. though all the characters I, I think argue, all the character moments make sense like, I would say B is a more fa- because again it has to be like relative but I think B would be a more fair all spot right, to we'll give it, it a B okay well, I, I think, I think B yeah kind of like what you said Pat like the narrative kind of like is a little bit here and there, but like, I think she really as a character, like she destroyed it in this. Well, movie, truthfully, so. I think her performance is the worst one in the movie movie. And I've said that since it came out, I think she's gotten better as captain Marvel and we won't know for sure until the Marvels comes out, but her in the movie amongst the uh, other actors, she's clearly the weakest. I th- the but she thing- has to like go through like the whole memory and everything. So it's like, you no, can't dude, have she's a very just strong fucking, character. No, dude, she's just angry and doesn't understand what's going on for the first half of the movie. And then the second half of the movie, it's all of a sudden like she, her emotions, instead of the gradual climb, you know, until like, you know how Batman's walking around clueless for the first half of like, um, the Batman. I couldn't remember what the fuck the name of the movie was. Um, but then he slowly pieces it together in act two. And then by act three, he figures it all out. He fig- like the whole mystery is like unravels to him and say that with one piece, he was missing everything. Right. Well, that's a better movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I realize <laughs> that. I realize that. But I mean, like from a performance standpoint, like Robert Pattinson, like you can really see the gear is turning even through his eyes. You can see the gear is turning in his head throughout the movie. Well, this is a Marvel where, movie. I think it's, yeah, I think it's where different. I feel like yeah, her, in this where it's she's supposed to be recovering this mystery of her life and where she's been for the si- last six years i felt like her performance was i'm angry and no one understands why i'm angry for the first half of the movie and then the second half of the movie when the plot just, isn't even just, fully revealed it yet flips. it just flips like i'm superhero captain marvel now that and like not from a writing angle from a performance angle where she was performing all of this material like she already knew like the character already knew what the end was gonna be you know what i mean for me and, it's and that's, and I, that's a hard thing to do for sure so for me, the other thing, and I know this goes against what I said about Spider-Man, but what breaks it for me is just how overpowered uh, she is within the universe. Mm-hmm. And like that, like to me, breaks the logic of the whole greater Marvel universe and how after this movie, they literally send her out into fucking space because <laughs> they're like, we fucked up and made her too powerful. So that right. f- like for me drops the movie down for how I perceive it because it was a misstep in the whole MCU. Mm. But I don't, we can't take that away from the whole um, film. It's from the, the film itself. Uh, you know, you know what the, their frame in the next one as with the Marvels. You know what the, the plot of that is? Are they taking some of her powers away? Every time one of the three of them uses their powers, they switch places. Okay. What? So uh. it's like her. So that's their way to get rid Monica of her. Monica Rambo <laughs> and um, uh, that feels uh, and Kamala Beta. Khan. Yeah, there you go. That's the one. Uh, they're um, they all uh, when they use their powers, they trade places. That just seems like a convenient way to get rid of Captain Marvel. Like- 
Yeah. What if she tries Instead to of, fly in space and she accidentally transports Kamala Khan out? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, then she it's, dies. It's going to be convenient quickly in the in the short term, but in the long term, they're going to be like, this is fucking annoying. They'll figure out some sort yeah. of, you know, the dial some of destiny. Yeah. Know, yeah. They'll call up destiny. All right. What's next? Um, Long you way home. Pat. Oh. Esther, yep. yep. Gonna... <laughs> yes. Oh no! Wait. Uh, yeah, no, no, there you go. That's right. Yep. Now, this is this is end game for <sighs> all y'all. No. Um, end, end game is S tier. I'm putting it at A. This one Far is undoubtedly better than the first one. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody shits percent. on it. Yeah. People say this is the worst Spider-Man movie on Twitter. I'm like, There's really? No fucking way. No. The dude, the Mysterio sequences in this movie alone are absolutely incredible, and the way he stops the villain is fucking awesome. Where Mysterio does the thing and he has to close his eyes and use his spider sense to find mm-hmm. out where all the drones it's very are. Very Spider Man, right? Yeah. But at the very end, just when you think it's over and he's about to give up, you see him just grab something behind him, and then Jake Gyllenhaal comes in the frame, and it turns out all the shit, all that shit was fake it was a too. Trick. Yeah, it was that. that I remember seeing yeah. that. Blew me away. I was like, this is the best use of Spider Man Spider Sense ever in any And he gets hit by a movies. train. He does. Yeah. He does, which, you know, would turn any normal human into Pink Mist, but not Spider Man. Yeah. I, I think it's a great it's a great portrayal of like young Spider Man, like how he should be kind of like not knowing everything yet. Yeah. It's a good villain that yeah, is not dude. like a Mike, cataclysmic that's, world ender. That's a great point. The fact that he was kind of like taken in and taken advantage of by somebody older and wiser than him who deceived him intentionally because he's a kid. Yeah. That's and a good point. Also, it's a good like kind of like flip between that and Tony Stark. You see like what that yeah. could have done and, and so also, it's a good dichotomy. It also establishes the um the relationship between Talos and um Nick Fury on a larger level because how many years has Talos just been taking the place of Nick Fury and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And doing mission debriefs and everything. Cause Nick Fury is out in fucking cyber, uh, not cyber out in the uh, space beach space or whatever, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, I like this one. People say that it, they don't, that they think this is the worst one of uh, horseshit. This is obviously the best. This is my favorite. Right, I would, I, I'll I'll the first two. Yeah. Cause remember there's another one in here that is <laughs> that, that, uh, <laughs> All right, now we're entering phase four. Oh boy! All right, so, so we had like six television shows. You notice, that we're not notice how like a lot of it's stacked. It's very top, top heavy. It's not going to be. It's for not going to be that way. Yeah. Okay. So Black Widow. I'm just going to go ahead. Yeah. I put it right at a C. I'd say it's really. A C. I could. Here's the deal, man. You got Eternals on this list, and you got Thor: Love and Thunder. So like, it, this is a D for me. That movie didn't need to happen. And I didn't give. Two I would shits also about it. put it as a D. I think. Really. All, Let, right. Wait, all right. Let's let's, let's talk I'll it put out. it as a D. I'll put what it are in. what are the positive traits about this movie? It's like the Winter Soldier. No, it's it's like <laughs> it's the Winter Soldier. It's literally the plot you just, like, from the Winter Soldier. And what there's way? like it, all the same elements from the Winter Soldier are the same elements they cooked with this one, but it doesn't have the same politically I will say charged the, overtone. The family elements were funny and fun, and I liked all the act. You know, Rachel Weiss and David Harbour and Florence Pugh were all really great. Thought the story was kind of lame. Lame. Uh, the Harvey Weinstein thing kind of didn't work for me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the where she broke her. Nose, nose kind of sucked. No longer smell, which like yeah. I get in a superhero world would make sense, but also at that moment I was just like, ooh, okay. Um, I don't know because you know I she can't. also just head. They they, they started and ended Taskmaster Taskmaster so unceremoniously, like was just such such a nothing of a villain in the yeah. movie. Yes, yeah, there was no. I didn't um, care from an emotional impact, and just visually, this movie was garbage. So, I know they were working between like. Pandemic COVID stuff, but oh my god. So I think um for me on this movie, I think the thing that doesn't work the most is the themes. How they try to do like this world, this thing where it's like this guy's like, we have an unlimited supply of little girls all yeah. over the world. But like that's really weird. I think the family dynamic and them being like Soviet spies is really cool. That was yeah, the I opening think, sequence was yeah, a lot of fun. I think it's an interesting exploration of like trauma bonding and like sticking to what you know versus going against the devil you don't know because like she know they all know that they're not really family, but they feel like a family, so that's why they have that dinner scene. Um 
I yeah, think but if you're going to do that, like, all the Civil done. War <laughs> is so much better. I think the action sequences are really good, especially for, like, bombs and bullets and spies. I think that's good for Marvel. Um, I really love the idea of the Red Room being in the sky and all that shit, and I fucking love when they blow that place up and they're all riding different, like, debris down and David Arbor's out of his crazy fucking Russian mind, like, drinking vodka and riding a helicopter that, that's down. That's where it got a little... Like, a, 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 for me, I was like, I, I thought it was just, like, too over-the-top, yeah, that well, explosion sequence. So, I, all that shit... Did it for me. What really didn't do it for me was the Themes. with a weird theme where they were just like they tr- like the whole the whole idea of female spies being these like seductive like succubuses or whatever is like that's not a new thing. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's weird that Marvel tried to make it like this really specific avenue of like. Of like, oh yeah, there's all these little girls around the world that we can just take and we can abuse and make them do what we want them to do and all this stuff. It's like, yeah, but that's not a, like, that's accepted lore in like spy canon. So like to do this weird, th- I don't know, it just felt weird I mean, at the that, end. Like, I know, I, I don't Like really watch that movie with Red that. Sparrow with Jennifer Lawrence, which is basically the same thing as the Black Widow movie. But done better. But more of like a spy thriller. And it's, it's, it's that same theme, but done well. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's just a weird thing right, to throw in. So you're in. putting well, like, it in C. Wait, wait, wait. But like with that, why is this a Marvel movie then? Like it doesn't need to be a Marvel movie. It doesn't contribute to anything in that like, type say, of universe. Mike, what I would say oh, that it's is, also like five years too late. That's well, the other that, problem that's I That's the big it, yeah. thing. But yeah. also, Mike, you have a character, Black Widow, who, you know, is a spy and was tra- and, like taken from her family and trained as, a, that's why it exists in the Marvel universe because it exists in the Marvel universe. Yeah. I, I Which is a bad thing. My, <laughs> like, that's, that's a my, bad justification. But that's the thing. It's like, I understand, you know, like, if you were to say that, yeah, but, like, this is a comic here, accurate. Yeah. This is, like, a, a character that was from the comic lore. Yeah, also, let's sure. not sit here and Why pretend that Why is there an, Black, uh, an archer in... Let's, let's not sit here and pretend that Black fair. Widow doesn't deserve a fucking movie. This movie came five years too yes. late, though. And we already know what the end of her story is. That's why I always feel like when you do prequels before somebody dies, it's always like, you know, you know the ending already. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. I just kind of feel like that's kind of you. I mean, I, I, I'm just looking at, so I guess the last question is we have Iron Man two or is that three? I keep forgetting. I would say this is better than what is it? What is it on par with? Uh, what do we have in C so far? Is that Iron Man 2 Iron or 3? Iron Man 3 and, and Thor, Thor. Which one? The original? Yeah. I I would say it's definitely not worse than the original Thor. Yeah. But it, I would, I would I say, say I liked it better than Thor The Dark World. Okay, so it goes on So C. I would put it in C. Okay. All right. All right. Next Is we, that fair, Mike? That's fine. Next we have Shang-Chi. Um, I would give this an A. I really like this movie. I like this movie a lot. Yeah, if you, this is the if only remember, this is like, the only Phase Four movie that I've rewatched. I again, for me, it was like the writing I really thought was like so memey and like corny and didn't. And I know it's like a fun Marvel action movie. I would give it a B. I don't think it rises to the same level. Um, uh, I was trying to like what else is in there? Where do we have Spider Man One? Spider Man One's in B. If you're going to put Spider-Man 1 in B, I think Shang-Chi should definitely not be in A. I think this is a better movie than Spider-Man 1. I, I disagree, with, disagree that. with that. But I, I'm, but like looking at the rest of everything in A, it's kind of, it's hard to put it in there. It definitely but I really, if you go back, I love level. this movie. I'd say, I would put it on the same level as the first Avenger. It's a great you, introduction to the character. It shows us a side of the MCU we've never seen before. There's a mystic side now, too, that they're introducing. Uh, there's like... I really love all of the action in that movie. I love Simu, uh, Simu Liu in the role. I love the cast. Michelle Yeoh is great as well. The scene where they're dance fighting and falling in love is absolutely incredible in-camera wire work, not to mention all the stunt work done by the cast. The only thing that kills that movie the final battle. is fucking Aquafina. She is the worst, <laughs> the most annoying part oh, of that mean, movie. So you mean about 75 to 80% of the movie? <laughs> Every scene she's not in is... So you mean about twenty every to twenty five percent? Every of the scene movie? that she's in is like, like here, you know. Um, and I, I don't think it rises to the same level as anything on. That being A-tier. said, her character I think has a great message at the end of the movie. 
where they hand her the quiver and the arrows and she says, I don't know how to fire a bow. And she says, well, you'll never hit anything if you don't try and shoot. And I was just like, that's a lot of people need to hear that. <laughs> shoot your shot. So, uh, all right. What else do we have in B? We have Iron Man two age of Ultron. It's no, we have Iron Man. Th- this Iron, is Man Iron, 3. T- two. Sorry, this is Iron Man three. Sorry. I can't get those straight. We have age of Ultron, Ant-Man. Yeah. I, I would put Shang-Chi above all of these movies. I would, I, it's better than Dr. Strange. hundred percent. I, all right, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I don't. Th- I think Ant Man. It's on the same level as Ant Man, but better than Doctor Strange. Maybe next time we should rank them. <laughs> anyway, yeah. All right, uh, I'll just do us all a favor and I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> no, Pat, I'm gonna argue. <laughs> uh, for for audiences listening, uh, uh, that's the Eternals going at the very bottom. Yes, because there's no reason that. <sighs> there's no reason to what rehash. Up? Like it's just that movie wasn't a part of the plan. They, they, we now learn that they had a content quota and that Chloe Zhao pitched this movie to Kevin Feige and he was like, sure, let's whatever. Play yeah, whatever. And it's clear that she was out of her depth. Like it's how, why, why would they ever green light a movie with 10 ensemble ma- characters and be like, yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. Yeah, they really could have, I guess. They could. I know they did kind of put characters, some characters together, and got rid of some. They could have even thinned it down. Oh more. yeah. Oh yeah. They could have thinned. Yeah, it down across like time. Also, the there's like. Well. Also, there's like. like it's not gonna go. <laughs> there's also one character who's just like, I don't believe in violence, and just pieces out yeah, during the final battle. The yeah, exactly. Forty five percent of the movie. And yeah. then he comes back later, and he's like, Oh, I hope you guys aren't mad at me that I pissed off her a bit. Um. All right. A thousand years. Uh, no way home. It's. We're just gonna go ahead and throw that up here. Mm. I absolutely would put this as no. A. Yes. It's got no. so many like flaws. Uh, I had so much fucking fun with this movie, but it's got too many flaws to be S. I want to know what the flaws are though. Uh, how about Doctor Strange just dude, just just like come on. not acting like the come character on. he should? Come on, dude. Doctor Strange is an arrogant piece of shit. Of course, he thought he could literally wipe the minds of people on the planet and thought it wouldn't be a big deal. But like, literally, they they made him like just not even try at all and just like do whatever just to make the movie plot work. But why would he try? You get what I'm saying? Like, you know, the whole part was like, wait a minute, you didn't even try to call your advisor or whatever to like, ex- like plead your case. He had already assumed Peter was smart enough to do that. Peter wouldn't be smart enough to do that. Okay. Like, and but even this is, then. That's Peter. Yeah. Mike, where do you well, yeah, weigh in on this? It's, it's, like, it's a comedy of errors across everybody. But that's everybody. the thing. Like, like it's, it's not. that thing. And yeah. that's the point. But it also makes sense. Like, Doctor Strange would be like, yeah, no problem. But even, even though, he, like, the whole thing is premised on him, like, oh, I did a bad spell. Like, he's. But it's all- so it's not even about, like, him, like, making the decision to help out Peter. It's about him doing a spell like he didn't even think about. He just like, yeah, whatever. I'll just whip this up and not like he. Would. Why would he, though? Have you he's, seen yeah, the first Doctor Strange? He, he literally gets so told. fucked up where it like literally broke the space time. Dude, continuum. He got told That's in the him. first movie not to fuck with time. And all he does the rest of the movie is fuck with time. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the way he defeats the villain in the first Doctor Strange movie is by breaking time and creating a loop. And they're there for thousands of years. Because he knows that. better. Well, because he, he's in, outsmarted. In, well, yeah, be, by breaking the rules. But this, he didn't break. He like the rule is breaking, don't fuck with time. It was he broke him the just rules. doing something just so like so offhand. in character. Like I totally disagree with you. Hundred percent in character. Mike, of course, are, do Dr. you Strange. agree that this is S, or do you agree with me that it's A? Think about the feelings. I, no, no, no. Felt. Let, him, let, let Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Do I think it was a perfect movie? Like I think Winter Soldier was, like like Endgame was. It was not a perfect movie. I'd put it up there with. There that. was a I, lot it, of suspension of disbelief. If there's one Spider-Man movie that keeps the company of the Avengers films, especially Endgame, Winter Soldier, and Infinity Mike, War, I haven't heard a letter from you yet. I, it's ass, Nick. I'm sorry. All like, right. I like if it's. I, it, listen, it, I, it's I'm fine so, if I'm the odd man think, out here. I'm just not going to let Pat steamroll me. No, that's okay. I think it was like Spider-Man Two. They really figured out how he's going to be like existing, and this was just like nail in the coffin of how like we're going with that. And 
the character development for the rest of other people, like Pat's also, saying. Also, you guys. It's like, this is just them. Think about like, the premise perfectly. of this. If this was supposed to be nothing but nostalgia, nostalgia, this could have been a million times worse. They found a way to make the villains and the other two Spider-Man jump universes that made sense and that fit with all of their characters for solid plot resolution that moved our MCU Spider-Man's character way into the future. But they brought it Venom in, though. So I mean, for like 20 seconds, yeah. Yeah. For and listen. That's got to deduct some points. <laughs> no, if, you, if you turn it off on the credits, start, if you, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you never get to that part of the movie, does it really ever happen? No, no, no. So, um, so that's my whole thing, is that like, this dude... They could have just backed a fucking dumb truck of bullshit up to this studio and been like, here's the next Spider-Man movie. Just nostalgia out the ass and nobody cares. But it wasn't. It was so much better than that. It was so much better. I want to watch it right now just talking about it. Fuck That's this. Fine. We're going home. No. <laughs> That's fine. It's I, I'll allow it. Damn. All right. I didn't think Spider-Man would be the one. All right. Now here come the... These are the three heavy Here hitters. Here comes the boom, ready yeah. or not. <laughs> okay, so... um, What is that one? What am I looking at? Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I'd give Wanda this a B. Vision. I'd also give it a B. I'd yep, give it a give. That's an easy B. That's an easy B, yeah. WandaVision Season 2. <laughs> uh, Thor, <laughs> Love oof, and Thunder. Oof, uh, oof. That's a D. That's, that's, that's going to be a D for me, dog. That's so a D. Did I hate it more? Well, if we put it in D, then I'm going to say we should probably bring Black Widow down to D as well. Dude, this movie sucks. I'm sorry. Dude, like, Black Widow is not better than Thor: Love and Thunder. So then you put it. Okay. Well, here's the no, thing. no. I'd, I, pu- I'd put them on the same. I'd, I okay. I'd bring Black Let's Widow. Let's deal down. with the the issue of uh, a tale of two Thors right now. Tale of two. Thors. I think that this Love and Thunder is better than the All Dark right, World. Bring Dark World down to okay. E with Edward. And then you want to put this one here. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Mike, you're cool with that. Yeah. All right. I think I, but only it only gets a D because we there's so much time in between those two movies that they it would have been inexcusable for it to be the same level. Yeah, I agree. All right, I'd give it an A. I'd give it an S. You'd give it an S. I really thought it was like so perfectly constructed to deal with the loss of Chadwick Boseman introducing a, a a real high stakes villain in a without it being like intergalactic you know yeah. it was like a real threat um the the like his reasoning and rationale was a great commentary on like politics and geopolitics and shit that we're dealing with now yeah. where it's like we have to strike first before they attack us um i like all like everything worked in this movie for me um for listeners wakanda forever burke what about you it's not as good as the first Black Panther. Like I wouldn't put it S tier the same as it. It's good. Wait, Nick. Wait, wait, wait. Like I think they Mike, did a good. We, we're not saying that they're that they're equal. They get the equal score, but I'm saying like no. it, it it falls somewhere between like 95 and 100. percent It's an A for me. Like don't like I enjoyed it. Like I mean I. It did a good job. What what it I'm just gonna, was not as com- like it wasn't nearly as compelling. I I would say if you're gonna put Spider Man No Way Home in S, this also belongs in S. I I'm just saying. I firmly disagree. I didn't watch all Spider Man and wish that somebody else was Dude, there. Dude, what about <laughs> when, when what about when fucking um. Wait, are you talking about Chadwick Boseman? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, okay. So fucking uh, Tom Holland didn't drop dead. Yeah. yeah. Um, dude, when when so we didn't get a chance to talk to, about this, Mike and I were uh, gone for the Wakanda Forever episode. When she goes to the, the uh, what's it called? The Eternal Plane or whatever, mm-hmm. and sees fucking uh, Michael B. Jordan, I lost my goddamn mind. That yeah. was so awesome. Our theater lost their shit, too. I, w- of course I felt would the same her. way as when Tobey Maguire showed, or uh, when uh, other Spider-Man showed up, <laughs> uh, where it was no, like, holy uh, shit. No, no. It's not the same. <laughs> unacceptable. It was, it, unacceptable. Here's what, that you're kind talking, of sentiment, I would say not the same. Spider-Man is more spectacle. This is more emotionally impactful by far. But and if we're going by the same rules that you said, if it's about what you're bringing to the table, Wakanda Forever is bringing a whole lot more emotional stakes to the table than, than Spider-Man No Way Home. 
Yes. It's not playing on the same I, field. Okay. I would agree with that. However, I think Spider-Man No Way Home is a better movie than Wakanda Forever. And I like I, Wakanda Forever, and I think Wakanda Forever is a great movie. Let's just let's say yeah. that, like let's get that what, out of the way first. All right, so let me ask you this. What didn't work for you other than we, we before we started the episode we were talking about how like the plot resolution was a little weak. Kind of lame. Um, but I would only call it a little weak. I wouldn't say that it was bad. I would say it's like it could have used a little bit more. I think they kind of ran out of time. I'll put it like this. I think there was a more obvious choice to pass Black Panther off to somebody else uh, on the on the team. And I also think the post credit scenes kind of fucking weird, too, for like implications with the MCU, like what that means going forward. That was that was weird, but kind of weird. All right. Well, what about um, Venom? As, <laughs> bro, I, you, I have never sat think, here and made excuses for I Venom. I think baby okay? T'Challa is equally okay. as awkward as Venom. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, like, can I go back I to just, your like other I point said, about I just the feel handing like, it off? I just feel like the handing it off was like, there was a more obvious person I think to give it to number one Here's, and number, but, but I want to address that before okay. we move on to your next okay, point. Go ahead. What I think is fucking awesome though, is that they, they passed it off to Shuri, but at the same time left the door open for them to immediately move yes, on to yes. another Black Panther. Yes, they did. Which is like, I'm so thankful they left that door um, open. So they accomplished, like, they, they gave her, like, a satisfying story, but also, like, did it in a way that's like, now we're stuck with Letitia Wright forever. I just kind of felt like we were missing something the entire time, and maybe that was the point, you know? But ultimately, yeah. I felt like that was... The, it doesn't make any... what like I'm still seeing an objectively good movie, but I just felt like it was missing something. And you, what is that? Chadwick Boseman? Yes. Dude, that, that's... You can't... But it's not just, it's not just him on screen. It's his essence. It's his spirit. It's his... You know, it's his swagger, so to speak. You know? Okay. Like, I just... I Literally, the whole movie was like about Black grief first, dealing with the lack of Chadwick that. Boseman. That's why I said, like, maybe it's supposed to be like that, and that might be why I'm turned off from that aspect of the movie. You know I think I mean? you're going to you're gonna have a Captain but, Marvel uh, moment but, a year or two from now and say, holy shit, Tanakh I missed Wartha the point. is great as Namor. I'm not going to die. He's a great He's villain, too. Awesome. He's a great villain, too. I think all of the characters... I mean... We could have used more Mbako. Uh, oh, we could I, have used more. Uh, I think he was used Nakia. I I think um I think Riri Williams was just kind of like, what is Riri Williams doing selling fucking the only vibranium magnet in the world to an arms dealer? Like, uh, do you get what I'm saying? Like, there's these there some her yeah, contrivances. Her, you her mean like Spider Man No Way her Home stuff? Some was really convenient in. cut plot contrivances. Like what? Like the whole the spell that brought in other villains but from that's other universes. The plot that's of a the plot movie. contrivance. That's not. So that's is not Riri like, Williams. The as, whole movie hinges on that, though. Not Riri Williams showing up. Like, I I like the way that they they brought her into the universe in an organic way rather than her just showing up out of yeah, nowhere. Uh, her, Although it was the Power Rangers design suit was kind of weird too. The, the suit was weird, and also the Midnight Angel suit oh, was those ugly look bad. as fuck. Those but they so did bad. call that out in the movie. Uh, so hold on, hold on. Was it interesting that Ironheart gets the same origin story as Spider Man, where it's like super genius kid plucked out of yep, obscurity yep. and becomes the next Iron Man? Um, there's, there's, there's that, and then there's another scene in that movie where she goes on. Oh, where they fire um Okoye from the door Milage and she, and Angela Bassett's like talking about how um she betrayed the crown or whatever, but it's like, no, she's sworn to protect the throne no matter who sits on it. That's what they said in the first one. So but I she's feel broken. Like, I feel like her pulling that up now. And then I even said it with Dylan. We have a clip about it. Is that it really felt like a, you know, not now we're only on the subject. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> motherfucker. Like I felt like, all right, if that was a bigger issue, because you know, it like it, it that didn't make sense for her, for her, them to get rid of her. You know what I mean? Like those, I those types of moments. It was a mom having an emotional moment. But we're not yeah, here. But we're not here to litigate yeah. the the, the either way, minute to minute. Either of, way, though, I think I think if you guys think it's an A tier movie, that's fine. I disagree. I think it's S tier. All right, so you guys want to rank them left to right? Which one belongs? I say, I, I think we're done because we need to talk about Pinocchio. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll just go, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, screenshot this and we'll post. All this right, on so socials. here's our. Marvel official ranking. And, so this is our official tier list. Now uh, don't get, don't get the just pull it over to the mm. farthest movie. I, we don't want the gears in there. 
Okay. Just cut out Eternals. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, look, it's a perfect square. How nice. I can't see the the edges, but whatever. Um Yeah, next time we do this, next time there's a batch of them that comes out, we should rank them instead of tier cuz ranking them, I feel like we can move them around. Yeah. As to I like agree. what like what is better than this one? What is I this? I feel when we get into actually ranking them, it's going to be a whole hell of a lot harder. Whereas at least yeah. it's like we can put it into a bracket and it's like, all right, fine, A tier. We could do a bracket too. Oh, like uh, we can, you can set up a Photoshop bracket and go head to head. That's whole kind one. of fun. That yeah, we could do that too. That's a whole episode though. But all right, so you want to move on to Pinocchio? Let's now? move on. Okay. So, um, <laughs> what just, was that? Just setting that up. So, um, we watched uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio on Netflix, or as I call it uh pinocchio prime pinocchio prime <laughs> and um uh you want to do non-spoiler spoiler i think it calls for non-spoiler spoiler. okay um you want to start i was thoroughly impressed with this movie i thought it was emotionally satisfying i thought all the performances were outstanding and I thought it delivered on what the themes of Pinocchio are supposed to be, unlike the Disney reboot that just totally undermined the thema- the themes of the whole fucking story. This was great. I and of course, like Guillermo del Toro, um, it's the uh, Jim Henson studio that did the st- stop motion animation, mm-hmm. and who did the score? Um, it's uh, the same guy who works with. Um, uh, uh, Wes Anderson on all like the Wes Anderson movies. Mm-hmm. So obviously, like I've I got a soft spot for Wes Anderson. So it was very Wes Anderson in a lot of of the movie. Okay, uh, Burke, what about you? Uh, like super similar to most of what Nick said. I think the strongest point and like its best argument for this movie is Guillermo del Toro's direction of it. You get so many cool things in his like universe that it comes out of. A lot of like the underlying themes and other his movies like it's got a lot of pan's labyrinth type things there's a lot of like social commentary about like war actually being impactful in this one and how he kind of like uses that as a red thread throughout the rest of his movies there's cool elements in it about death and about like yeah. you know obviously like death rebirth what it means to be dead what it means to what it means be alive. to be alive like yeah and in ways that are not just like yeah i'm a real boy and i'm a little like bitch and then i turn into a donkey i'm a little bitch like, <laughs> like i i thought it was great i really liked the actual narrative element of the film how it was told through you know Jiminy Cricket in that kind of way, or not Jiminy Cricket, Sebastian J. Cricket, and it, it, like they also get rid of a, a lot of the weird pot, plot contrivances and how do we get from point A to point B. The story had such a beautiful flow, and it like it made sense of how how we got to every single point in the movie. Yeah, the only criticism that I have for it in that way is I did feel that it meandered a bit. Um, okay, like Towards I. The I end. The, the thing is, like, how it got there, yeah, not everything was just kind of like, oh, shit, then this happened. Like, it did have a very linear thread throughout everything in a way that worked well. I think it could have been a little bit shorter, to be That's honest. That's fine. I'd give it a 9 and, out of 10. And then just last point, there were random songs in it. I loved all the songs. I thought they were a million times better than any of the music in the Disney one. It was, it's interesting, but I was kind of like, I don't need you to do that. I think I felt a lot of the music added into it was because they were like, well, I have to do it's a Pinocchio. little like homage to the Disney shit. Okay. All right. Let's cut to Pat. He's got, yep. I can see his face. Chewing on his tongue. <laughs> All you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that looks like shit. Come on. Um, I was bored to fucking tears during this. Suck my dick. <laughs> I was Comedy. bored to fucking tears. I was like, it's Pinocchio. And we went from point A to point. I fucking hated every new song. I was like, these aren't the songs I know. I was like, get the fuck out of here Dude. with this. Um, go take your nostalgia. Uh, go to go. I think the jerk direction. Off to your Pinocchio. I think. The, I think. I, I just want you to know. I'll tell you the story later. Actually, we'll do it off air. Um, oh, the, at the time you actually jerked off to Pinocchio. No, no, no. 
<laughs> no, uh, I watched this and was like, holy smokey, okay, this is not Pinocchio. No, I mean, listen, I think there's moments of, at least in my opinion, I think that there's moments of greatness. Um, I think the animation is incredible. I think the cinematography is really great. The effects are fucking unreal. Um, like everything technically about this movie, I think is great. Everything else that I was bored as fuck. I was like, okay, Ewan McGregor's really good as I think he's just called the cricket. Sebastian J. Sebastian J. Cricket. J. cricket. And then, uh, I'll blow you. <laughs> um, Jim Geppetto looked like this weird Santa Claus looking fucking guy. Oh man. Pinocchio was looked like an old Italian somehow man. Somehow <laughs> Pinocchio was more annoying in this one than he was in the in the Disney remake. And I That's thought that the was the point. I thought that yeah. was the fucking bar. Dude, all right. So no, no, I no. think we get I thought Pinocchio was naive in the Disney remake. In this one, I thought he's just he... fucking stupid. Well, this, this is, is how a, this he would is act. A, an inanimate object brought to life with no knowledge of anything in society. Yeah, but there's a suspension of disbelief there, okay? He doesn't have to keep asking fucking questions. How does he even know how to talk? That's the suspension of disbelief. Okay, that's okay. So where is it start and where is it end? And that's kind of my point. Hey, Pat, you're fine with the wooden boy coming to life, yeah. but him knowing what or not knowing what a chamber pot is, but he can sing, is where you draw the line. No, I mean like it's kind of my. I guess my my overall point is just that the like point is it's you just, have no taste. It's just kind of like <laughs> I don't know, fucking like slow and weird, and he's annoying. And I, I I think that's the thing is it's like it's just not your style in general, and this is very much. I'm into creepy Guillermo del Toro stuff and Wes Anderson style stop motion animation. So this is like right down the middle for but me. I, I loved Isle of Dogs. That I mean, I that love Guillermo del love. Toro. But all right, so let's get into spo- uh, first. I uh, I want to get into spoilers, but I want to say I, I give it this like a nine point five out of ten. Okay, uh, Mike, would you give what score would you give this? Give it like an eight seven five nine. We'll eight call it a. Half. We'll call okay, it a. Okay, you want to try again? Like, <laughs> we'll give that a I nine. I give it an eight Mike. and a half. Okay. Uh, and Pat, I don't care what your score is. Um, I give it like a six. I don't think we're gonna round down to your score because that's just bullshit. No, it's not horseshit. I was fucking. I like I said, I gave it an honest go. You s- and a I was six? bored. I I actually a checked. Six and a half. I checked to see how long we were in because I thought we had been going for like an hour or so already, and it was only twenty seven minutes had gone by. I was uh, like, that's just oh, on you, dude. The grief. first half hour of the movie. Like, um. So, uh, I. You know, like the whole prologue with his his real boy son, Carlo. No, I like th- I did like that though. So great to set up the character and like we got it was alluded to in the Disney reboot this no, past year. No, that kid got fucking bombed, bombed out of a by church. Fucking Nazis. <laughs> but, um, like Ron that, Perlman has that, a Nazi. Ron Perlman, so great. Yeah. With Carlo. that too, like they get bombed and they call like specific um point to being like this wasn't even meant to bomb the town. It wasn't yeah. even like an actual thing. It just like continues we have to, to drop allude the to the like <laughs> to the happenstance of like the, and fragility and randomness of life and death. Exactly. It sets it up initially. Mm. Yeah, I like that's a great point. The randomness of life and you're just gonna have to take you know ro- roll with the punches. Um, when we get you know skipping ahead a little bit when Pinocchio first comes to. Is that SpongeBob? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like when Pinocchio first comes to life, number one, the blue fairy's design, like as a wood wood sprite, so fucking cool. What was with the the glowing eyes that you and McGregor like, get the fuck out of they're here? They're spirits. They were yeah, like, they were they were all spirits coming together to create that one spirit. Because the when they all sprite. came oh, together, right, then yeah, they became yeah. the eyes in their like wings and shit. The design that's was right. awesome, yeah, yeah, yeah. incredible. That's yeah. um, that's Tilda Swinton. We're Tilda Swinton, about- yeah. Uh, Doctor yeah. Strange. She did, a, <laughs> she did a fabulous job in this movie. I thought. Yeah, I agree. Um, she was great. Yeah, and then Pinocchio comes to life, and the way that they wove in why Jiminy Cricket's there, and obviously, like that's that is in the original. He's writing he, his memoirs. He's writing his memoirs, but like he already had kind of found a home in the tree. Yeah, which that was cool. And he's like, "Hey, this is my pr-, rather than just being like, I'm gonna f- live on a shelf in this guy's <laughs> workshop." Um, like they really did a good job of making it make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, but when Pinocchio comes to life and he's all creepy in the attic, so fucking cool how he doesn't know how to move yet. And he's like creepy Annabelle. Like, yeah. 
I hated that. I hated the way he looked, but it was great. Like, I, I hated it. I loved how much I hated it. Was Carlo's yeah. voice actor the same as Pinocchio? I think so. That's the idea. I right? have it up on my phone. I can tell you in a second. Um, also, Christoph Waltz. Um, so good. He was. I, I did enjoy his performance. I like. I liked his performance. And I like Ron Perlman. Did you you know who Ron voiced? Ron Perlman was awesome in that. Great. Do you know who voiced the monkey? Oh, um, Kate Blanchett. Right? <laughs> Kate Blanchett yeah. playing an animated um, monkey. So we're in, spo- we're in spoilers Finn right now. Right? Did candle okay. Uh, well, how- Liz, what are you gonna say? Uh, yes, that was Kate Blanchett, and yes, Pinocchio and Carlo are the same. Okay. Actor. So, um, <laughs> when they're when they're at the uh, when they're you know going up the hill. You know, Geppetto died, and uh, oh, were you skipping ahead to the ending? <laughs> skipping well, to the on, damn on. ending. Okay. Then when they're walking up the hill, Liz just goes, "That monkey ain't looking so great either." And she goes, "Oh no, that monkey's on his last leg." The monkey, she, the monkey didn't looks, look good to begin she with. She looks at her phone, and as she looks at her phone, he fades away. And, and I was like, "Yo, yo, he died!" <laughs> I was like, "He really died." <laughs> I, I love. Like I, I do love Geppetto. this idea that. Pinocchio is now this like immortal <laughs> deity who's like just went out into the world after all his, his all his boss he died. It's like time to spread the lo- the he's, word of the Lord. It's like, like Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, pretty much. You know, <laughs> like time and space mean nothing. To well, him he at can this die point. now. He like I well, think, but uh, like let's not skip too far ahead. Yeah. Um. Where where do we go from there? All right. So we left off Pinocchio. His whole opening sequence. I think is great to kind of like he has no experience. He's got no moral compass. He's naive. So he's just like breaking things and not realizing. I think that's a great characterization to really get you into the frame of this kid needs to be taught what it is to be a person. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't, Mike, I just didn't like it. Back didn't me up here, Mike. Me. Say that one more time. I was turning on a light. <laughs> I really wish I had flipped to Mike while he did that. It was very creepy. <laughs> Mike, the the whole opening song where Pinocchio is like breaking things is a perfect representation of like how Pinocchio is fresh to this world and needs to be taught. This is what this is how you do this thing. You need oh, to learn these lessons Pino, and why he needs a, a a moral compass, a conscience, a spirit, a soul, a cricket, <laughs> a cricket. Mm-hmm. I guess actually that I have a little bit of problem with. Like, they just made him... I'm sorry. Well, because I'm thinking about it in the bigger context of things, is I he's so rebellious and just kind of like... An, I get it. He's supposed to be annoying. He's supposed to be like... That's the point of the movie. The, I know. I get it. Like, the pure essence of... It doesn't make him like, not annoying though, Nick. Uh, he's, no, but he's it's, it's like it's annoying. a good it's a good split because it's like he is, a, he is alive, but he's not a real boy. So it's kind of like he's navigating what it means, like you said, to exist and what it means to exist and where you sit as in your existence of this with the rest of things which they put to in the context me, me, with like religion like when you're a kid and you put like your your parents are like don't touch the stove and then like you touch this pinocchio was learning all of those lessons all in one day that he you that you learn over a lifetime off. he literally burns <laughs> his feet off you put out my light <laughs> you burned your rib sauce <laughs> um uh let's see so when he died he went to the afterlife right or like someplace with these weird like donnie darko rabbit that was cool rabbit oh, that, was, that was my arguably my favorite part those rabbits that you know voice cool. the rabbits who tim blake nelson really yeah mm-hmm. what else that what else is he in he's the, he's the dude from holes the doctor from holes oh yeah okay. he was in the uh um watchman tv show the guy with the mirror mask the oh, right, right. okay yeah Scruggs. i know yeah, Buster, oh, yeah. Yeah, Buster oh, okay yeah yeah he's in the incredible hulk he's the yes. leader and yes, he's he gonna is. be in the new captain america as okay. the leader mm-hmm. okay so that's why i know the name um i <sighs> here's my deal here's my deal here's my deal with this here's where i'm coming at it from i would not watch this regularly like I just wouldn't. Like this is isn't if I didn't house. if I didn't hype it up the I mean, same way that you're hyping up Avatar. Right. I wouldn't have turned it on. Yeah. But the thing like, is, is that I kind of feel like when you're coming at it from an angle of I wasn't gonna watch this anyway. I don't feel like quality is what eventually wins you over. There's got to be something that you like. There's got to be something that fits your palate. Patrick, Patrick. You know what I'm saying? Like. I can respect Citizen Kane, but I'm not going to fucking sit down and watch Citizen Kane because I don't like Citizen Kane. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, 
that's kind of what I'm getting at here is that like, I don't feel like there was anything that happened in this movie that would have pulled me in to watch this. Had I not already been, I'm not going to say forced. Had I not already had, had interest in watching this, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, but I feel like that's like, I don't think there's any, there's, there's nothing that there's nothing that would bring somebody in who wasn't already going to watch this. I, I slightly agree, but I feel like that's a lot of like Guillermo del Toro. He's, like, yeah, he's got his place. audience. Like, that's the type of his audience. It's not just like it's it's it's, it's a him movie, yeah, so but you go watch it, but it's like... It's Shame not Water supposed didn't to... win Best Picture because of Guillermo del, Tori- del Toro's audience. It won because it captured general audiences. Like, that's why that and movie won. I feel like, like no, that, I disagree. That's that, the point I'm not, like, that's not the point I'm making. Like, I, I don't, I, I kind of feel like with that, he was able to not only tell a really you're peculiar that, Guillermo del Same thing saying, with Pan's Labyrinth. You were saying that Shape of Water was a huge box office smash hit. No, what I'm saying is that, that the, the reason why. Or that the critics and the people in the industry said, this is an important movie. The reason why that movie won the hearts and minds of people was not because it catered just to to Guillermo del Toro's audience. It catered to his audience, but also had the ability to capture general audiences. I as well. totally the disagree. The same with you. way that Pan's Labyrinth did it when he won an Oscar for that in like 2008 and when he made hundreds of millions of dollars doing the Hellboy movies. I think it's that um, those movies, Shape of Water, Pan's Labyrinth, those are not mainstream movies. Those are movies that mainstream Dude, audiences may or may one know best about. Best picture, it has to be mainstream then. That's not true. Yes. Yes, it is. No, it's it's not like that box means literally that means by like by definition of the no. film industry, that was the best representation of film for 2018. Yeah, but it's not always right. like the biggest, most popular movie. It but wasn't, I, it but wasn't to like say that it's not a popular movie. Why was an Avengers Endgame the, uh, the movie of the year? Right. Okay. First of all, you know there's a difference between the way that they treat superhero blockbuster franchises. Like, because if that was the case, then they should have won all I of I don't even know why. Categories. Like, I think we're getting a little off topic here. I, I, at the end of the day, is what I'm, what the point I'm trying to say is most people, like, uh, like who like Guillermo del Toro fans are in, they're in a lane. They have that lane. Yes. If you're coming to this movie, I, th- like, you're going to love it. If you wind up watching this movie, unless you're Pat, I think, you know, like you will enjoy it. If you know, whether you like Guillermo del Toro or not, I think it has a lot to offer. It's got emotional stakes. It's got a really compelling story and it's a better, t- fresher take on the source material than anything Disney's. Like, will you at least t- say that it's a lot, hell of a lot y- yes, better. It is a lot. Than the I Disney mean, version? Yeah, without a doubt, they, they, there's no question about that, but I'm saying from the perspective of someone who wasn't going to watch this, if I didn't have to, this did not do anything to make me recommend this to people who wouldn't watch this. I would say to you, oh, you would really like this. You would watch it. Okay. I, it wasn't really for me. Now, Ma- like, I want to ask Mike, Would do you feel the same way where it's like if they didn't intend to watch it, would you recommend it to them? You know what I mean? I would stick with my what I said before. It's like, well, do you did you like Pan's Labyrinth? Like would be the question I asked. And it's like, do you like those really? type of movies where there's... I'd ask if they like Crimson Peak because that's what I felt like. Like, have you guys seen Crimson Peak? I don't Peak? know what that is. No. Crimson Peak is the film that Del Toro did after the Hellboy movies, and this was like mm. the one movie where he's like, people just threw money at him, do whatever yeah. you want, right? People who love Guillermo Del Toro, like who, favorite film like maker and everything, they say that's his best movie, and I think that's his worst. So, like, just put it in perspective like, for you. Interesting. Like it, it, that like movie this, is this so Guillermo Del Toro. It's um fucking. Uh, it's got a really famous cast. Tom Holland, I mean Tom Hiddleston's in it. It's about like ghosts in a fucking mansion and like this weird. Like, it's so Guillermo del Toro that like I just could not get into it. Yet I think Hellboy Two: The Golden Army is one of the better comic book movies from that era, and he did that movie too. I love Pan's Labyrinth and I love Shape of Water. Like, I think you're right. Guillermo del Toro has his avenue. But I definitely would add to that and say that there's also an avenue that he has that opens the door up splits the to difference. more commercial success. Because I feel Shape like of the, Water, I feel like this Shape is in of there. Water was only fifteen million dollars to make, and it made two hundred and five million. That is a huge box office success. So, like, <laughs> I, I I don't want to say that this is an anomaly, but I'm going to say it, I think that can still be true about this movie. And you not like it. You not have enjoyed it. Yeah. I still think it, this can appeal to larger audiences, like I, but it just didn't appeal to you in particular. I, I can see that like the money on screen, like the talent on screen. Like I, I can see the cinematography, the right, like it's just, 
I just don't click. I just did not click okay. with this. I, I I was bored during it. I was looking at my phone. I tried to. I loved you and McGregor. I love the cast. I love the performances. I paid attention to everything. Like it was Pinocchio. Uh, Monstro. <laughs> um, interesting take. Uh, he had like dicks all over yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you. All right. So like, again, I don't want to talk about the quality anymore. It's pretty clear how we all feel about yeah, it. Yeah. What do you think about the fact that they didn't do Pleasure Island and they did like the whole war thing? Well, I like, I mean, that angle because it's original and it's set in a certain time period now. And cool and, that it was. And I like the idea of like this using a, a what would be considered a children's medium to tell a really dark story like um disney doesn't want you to remember but they made hitler youth propaganda no, in the 30s yeah. <laughs> um right. and that was a really effective way to communicate dark propaganda on a lighter tone you know what i mean mm-hmm. for young you know for you know little hitlers to be like oh yes um whereas like or like movies that talk about death or that talk about um uh what's it called or talk about divorce or talk about like adultery like shit that like is serious but like they they boil it down like any episode of caillou you know just turn that shit on and we're talking to somebody who's having some sort of personal strife but uh and i i do appreciate that about this version that it's seen through a certain window and that it's talking about life and death and rebirth and what do those things mean in a specific era like there was clearly a vision for this you know what i mean and it also just it just threw nazis in and nobody was just like oh of course they put nazis in well, are they technically you know? cuz they're in italy they're are they nazis it's the national fascist it's the national party, fascist yeah. party but i mean like they are they're taking orders they're from doing Hitler. sikai yeah. yeah so <laughs> Yeah, but um, I, I liked I liked that they did it. Yeah, because like the old ones are like in like eighteen hundreds Italy. Like was when the yeah. other ones like take class. But like putting it in the thirties, and which is why I think this is really good that Guillermo del Toro did it. Because God did, damn it, I'm so fucking stupid. I watched this whole movie was like, damn, they really took this one back, huh? <laughs> This is when, an update. when the fucking other ones are like way way yeah. before this one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, but like I mean. He did The Devil's Backbone and Pan's Labyrinth, which were both about, like, around the Spanish Civil War. Mm. So I really like the fact that he was able to take, like, the tone and kind of, like, life during war and what it, how it parallels with, like, all the death and everything like that and actually put it in the movie in an organic way of bringing them to, like, the, like, the youth camp and, like, training them and doing things where you don't just get, like, this stupid island with the donkeys. I, I think that also plays into what I you knew- were saying about like the the what makes life meaningful, but it's like also the beautiful things in life, like family and friends, but also the terrible, horrible things that we experience in life, like war and death, and you know, yeah. like having to having to be put in these situations with people that you do care about. So you asked me about Treasure Island. I knew they weren't going to do Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island. I knew they weren't going to do Pleasure Island because that is a Disney specifically property. Disney, and you are. And the reason I know that is because when I was a young, when I was a young warthog, <laughs> when you go down to Downtown Disney, they have a section called I think it was it was Pleasure Island for a while, and then they uh, after too many people started getting shit faced and having fights, they you know they took away the alcohol license, and now it's. Now it's just now it's downtown. root beer island. Yeah, now it's just downtown <laughs> Disney. That's right. No donkeys, just root beer. Just root beer. Um, so um, yeah, I, I for, like the, I'm I'm baffled that you that you didn't. There's nothing really. It's the medium. It's the medium. You think so? Absolutely. I'm not surprised that he didn't like it. So the the for me the whole time I was thinking, Disney should take a step back and look at what they're doing here, rather than continuing on the path where they just reboot the movies and do it beat for beat and somehow still manage to make it worse than the originals where this takes a property that Disney has reworks the story, does it in an interesting way and does it like it like reinforces the, the origins of the story. Cause this is like, it's a, like a, um, Gr- brothers grim style you know what i mean like every yeah. children's nursery rhyme started out in a really dark fucked up story yeah this it harkens back to the original story but also tells like a night like a moral you know like the it's a morality play mm-hmm. like it was intended to be 
but it does it in an in interesting way and showcases the director's imagination rather than just like, just do the same thing yeah, again. Yeah, there's a clear vision here for sure What's on how to like, tell the story. It's crazy that Disney is is n like just not learning any lessons from the reboots that they've done and have been universally panned. Um, yep. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. But also, like, I, I, I like... Listen, winning cures everything, right? If the live-action Disney remakes were done well, we wouldn't be having this conversation because I think um, the live-action Disney remakes are, like, on a declining slope where, like, Jungle Book was awesome. Like, that was, like, top tier. And then there was one before that, too, even. I think Cinderella. That was also awesome. Mm -hmm. Beauty and the Beast was, like, the real last good one. And everything, like, th th don't even get me started on Aladdin and Lion King. But my point is that if those were good, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Whereas now that this is out, it really, I mean, Disney has to at this point, right? They had to be like, oh, why did, like, why did it, why does a property that people think we own the exclusive rights to like, cause the original is so popular. How did we fuck that up so bad? That'd be interesting to see like if, if this forces them or if more people start doing these types of things where it's like, it's a property that Disney does but doesn't own the rights to the original story if we got more of these style movies yeah and it kind of puts disney in a corner exactly i'd like to see that me too you like to see disney in a corner like a wild animal just listen i mean like they it, it's it's a shame because they're like while they're making money doing it, it's like they're they're like tarnishing the reputation of some of their their biggest properties most beloved properties Mm. I think they're tarnishing their reputation. I don't think they're tarnishing the reputation of their older properties because, like, I'll still I put agree. on the original Lion King, and I'm just not. I'm not Do like think, a movie that they made 35 years after this sucks. Now but, I hate the original. Here, here's the thing: there's other generations than us. Yes, and there's I will make sure to show my children the right ones up. because that's all I can do. There's Nick. kids growing up right now who are gonna watch the the rebooted ones, and they're gonna be like. Maybe they'll maybe they'll like them because that's the version that they grew up with. But it's not like they're going to grow up with this amazing. Yes, you know, like, it's like, like a, a, growing up in the nineties. You're going to grow Disney up with like a very mid, like <laughs> just just mid aggressively mid <laughs> movie. I feel like that's kind of the motif, though. Like as we get older, we look at childhoods now and we're like, that shit's mid. Our our childhood was great. Anyway, hey, we're besides the. <laughs> anyway, okay, boomer. <laughs> we're besides the point. Um, yeah. Uh, this just it didn't do it for me. I'm not sitting here like, oh, this was bad. This I just I just did L not. Liz, you're with telling it. me that Pat doesn't like uh, stop motion in general. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'll watch Rudolph yeah. the Five Legged Reindeer any day of the week, but I can't watch this anymore. Okay? Well, because that's like 40 minutes. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> well, do you know? Okay, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer is like 40 minutes. Rudolph the Five-Legged Reindeer is a parody that somebody made parody. <laughs> that's over an hour long that uh, he literally made with like construction paper and stop like stop animation in his own home and it's fucking incredible. Is it a porn parody? I've never um, heard of this. Yeah, I was yeah, like, is this just but it's not. But it's not like you know anthropomorphic. It's like somebody glued a big dick onto a clay Rudolph. And like they made stop motion. Oh, this animation. is yeah. This 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 looks like somebody made it in their basement and they yeah. with army you figures. You mean there. Pat made it in his basement? Yeah. Bozo did the. That's like I'm uh, promoting my film. Can I, oh, there's his dick. Okay, great. Officially unlicensed. Yeah, it's, it's it's silly putty, is what it is. It's, yeah, yeah. It, 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 silly putty. yeah. It came out. It came out in 2004. It's called Rudolph the Five Legged Reindeer, and it's 29 minutes long. Sorry. So that's why you enjoy it. It's because it's short. Oh, mm. you want me to bring that up? Naked no, no, no. <laughs> okay. No. So oh. I I would 100 percent recommend this movie to anybody, but. Not not Rudolph the Five Legged Reindeer. I'm talking about Pinocchio, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. I'd recommend it to anybody, but specifically if you're into, into Guillermo's work, it's a no brainer. Watch this. Uh, you Mike. Yeah, I mean, if you like these kind of movies, if you like like the Jojo Rabbit, like the Wes Anderson, like that style of film, um, absolutely watch it. I don't know if if you're. It's not a. It's not like a warm movie. For you know, for kids or anything like what you would anticipate, like the other Pinocchios to be like. Something that um, it is a bit long. I'd probably say if you want to go out and watch it, 
fine, but you could also Mike's like, you saying know, if you, you want to watch it, watch it. I'm saying if you want to watch it, watch it. Like if it's if you if you think he would have interest in it, give it's it a on shot. Netflix. If you otherwise, then okay. like no, you ain't spending any money. And there's a behind the scenes making of. I would watch that. I Did would. You, yeah, they're massive. Like the actual like some of the. Um, All right. Um, before we do clip of the week, my bladder is about to explode. So you guys have a conversation. Oh, I wish that. you said that before we just ended the conversation no, 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 okay, on Pinocchio. Going. Yeah. Mike, keep going. So our score, uh, I averaged our score. It comes out to be an eight, which is still a pretty good score. Uh, so I'm happy yeah. with that. I think I like. I think it's fine. I think it's hard because I don't think this is a massively appealing movie. Like it does not have. I don't. I totally disagree with Pat, where he's like, "Shape of Water" is mass appeal. Like I think I that is I a specific film. Of, has honestly, a specific... I think he's out of his goddamn mind. The fact that he yeah. he's like, "Oh yeah, this is a movie for the masses." And it's decided by the fact that it won the best picture. Like that doesn't mean that it's like got mass appeal. It means that people in the industry think it's an important film. Right. And this I feel falls into that type of feeling like the emotion, the like energy, the atmosphere of it. I think you said it in the beginning where it like it's a, it's the story is about, like what makes life valuable and the fact that it's fleeting is like, that's such an important message. The, 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 the beauty in life is that it's fleeting and we have to make the most of it while we're here and spend time with friends and family. Not unless those people are fucking assholes. That's true. Can I just say the first thing I saw when, so Pat turned this on and it woke me up and I saw them bury the pine cone and I rolled over and I looked at him and I go, I get it. And I, what did I say? I was like, I Pinocchio. <laughs> Pinocchio. Pinocchio. They really spelled it out in the in the Disney one. Oh well, your name uh, you're made out of pine wood, so I'll call you Pinocchio. So that's the thing. I've consumed. You got more, eyes. I consume more Pinocchio content this year than I have. <laughs> well, get, there's one more that we haven't watched yet, and it's Italian one. It the the Italian one. Who who did that one, Pat? The Italian Pinocchio. I don't know. I don't know. So we'll watch that. We'll watch that instead well, of Avatar. A, well, this next is the week. one that we were fucking salivating over. It was this one in the Disney one. What was the other one? The Italian one. Well, okay. the and the original. But who's one. in that one? I don't know. It's Italian. It's the Italians in it. Clip of the week. Okay, Liz, yeah. hit the button. Hit the button. Yeah. Okay. Is this from Back to the Future? <laughs> yep, and they're about yeah. to go 80 mi- 88 miles an hour, Nick. Now, this is uh, this clip was entitled Why You Don't Play With Fireworks. I was going to say, I see arson. So. <laughs> this guy is going off like it's Chinese New Year right now. You see he's just pouring lighter fluid. <laughs> oh, that's what he said. Th- I- yeah. He's just like, man. Just wait. What a great 4th of July it's been. And see, he's oh like, God, I'm impervious to damage. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You could have given me Damn. 15 things to say what would have happened, and that would not, that would not be list. one of them. I had some clips of people, like, they're getting way worse hurt, but I was like, this is going to be a nice surprise. Dude, that's just fuck? funny. This is like the video of the tires that were burning in the road and then the head-on collision happens. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Play it again. Let's give you a hit. So, yeah. yeah. So, this is him. Uh... Like, this is where you think it would go wrong. And right. that's where that is where it goes wrong. <laughs> and, like, I think this is, like, some sort of failed stunt, though. You know what I mean? Like, all right, dude, yes, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to get over the fireworks, and that's when you're going to drive the car, and I'll jump over it. But, like. like yeah. But you got a lot of smoke and, in there, and you can't see the guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just got too caught up in the fireworks and forgot that there was a car headed towards him. Or, like, this guy just didn't see him through all the smoke. You know, there's possible. no way. <laughs> if you're driving in, a, in your neighborhood and there's fireworks going off, you're not driving through it. If you're yeah, you're not driving your car right over that shit. <laughs> I like how he just keeps going, does not slow down at all. Which makes me think it's like a stunt, like Pat said. Well, that's the thing. It's also, like, kind of slow, too. You know, like, it's not mm-hmm. like he's driving. Fa- it's not like he got clocked. You know what I mean? It's like, you need a ride? You know, that's like, that's, that's kind of, 
you know? Yeah, I feel like he maybe like slid off the car as soon as it left frame. It was a real Simpsons hit and run moment. <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's good. That guy's kneecaps are liquid now. Anyway, um, so yeah, I think that's it for this week. Mm-hmm. Ready for next week? I'm I'm ready. I might actually watch Avatar 1 this week. I'm probably going to watch Avatar 1 as well. Mike, what about you? We should do a recap of 1 this week and just put it out this there. We Actually, not a bad idea. idea. Not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, thanks me. We'll talk about it after the episode. Um, But yeah, I'm ready. Fucking three hours. All right, That's the longest movie. I've, that'll be the longest movie I've seen, I see in my ever. life. Ever. 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 Next I'll week. Wait. Next week we're doing Avatar. So <laughs> buckle up. Yeah. And we're going to do just Avatar, and that's where we're going to close out the podcast forever for, for 2022 with. And then uh, 2023, we'll be back like first or second week. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, whoever mm-hmm. vacation time, if we're still together. Yeah. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> What's that? I guess, oh, no. That, that TikTok where the guy's like, ah, he's like drinking the bleach or whatever. He's like, <laughs> oh, I throw myself. I'm just kidding. Like, I got, I got somebody sent me. So for New Year's, I'm going to London. Uh, I got an article. Uh, one of my friends who's also going to be there and it was like uh you know be warned like think hard about traveling to (laughs) to england because there's going to be a strike and all like the uh, the airline workers in london are going to be on strike from the 23rd to new year's and it's like what do you mean think hard is it like just like oh just don't follow through with your travel plans like do something about this. Like, pay these people more yeah, money. Exactly. Like, I, it's not my fault that these people are working in terrible conditions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not my Think fault. Hard. That capital uh, capitalism historically That's, disenfranchises eighty five percent of the population. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> get your shit together. So, I, who knows if I'll make it back to the country? I'll be All like right. Mike. I'll be a fugitive from Roku City. I'm just. I can't keep them on. I Where can't I keep them in the same room. Barely the same continent, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So next week, uh, we'll see you guys here, and um, then we'll see you in 2023. So bye-bye.